The Life of Lucy Hartfelia, Fairy Tale. Lucy Hartfelia is a mage of the Fairy Tale Guild wherein she is a member of Team Natsu. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Lucy Hartfelia. Before we begin, we publish a new video almost every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background. Lucy was born in the once extremely wealthy and powerful Hartfelia family. Her father and mother were originally part of a merchant's guild called Love and Lucky, where they met. They decided to become independent when Lucy's mother, Layla, had become pregnant. They chose her name when they noticed that the sign on the guild was missing the letter K, and instead read Love and Lucy. It made an impression on them, so they decided to name their daughter after it. Back in her home, Lucy shared a good relationship with the staff in the estate, as well as presumably her mother until she passed away when Lucy was around the age of 10 in the year X777. However, because her father was overly obsessed with his business and money, he had neglected his daughter, which eventually led to her running away from home just over a year before the beginning of the story. Macau Arc Lucy is first introduced lamenting at the lack of magic stores in Hargeon. In the only magic store in the town, she attempts to get a discount through her sex appeal for the Celestial Spirit Nikora, which costs 20,000 jewels, but is angered when the price is only lowered by 1,000. As Lucy fumes in the streets, a ruckus erupts near her, which immediately gains her attention. Curious, she heads towards the commotion, hearing the name of the famed fire magic user Salamander, who turned out to actually be an imposter named Bora. Upon seeing him, her heart begins to flutter quickly as she slowly moves towards him. This feeling, however, soon disappears when Natsu, Dragneel, and Happy interrupt the proceedings, thinking Bora is the dragon Igneel. Disappointed to find that it's not the salamander they were looking for, they instantly move to leave, however, they get attacked by Bora's legion of female fans, and eventually get thrown away by them when Natsu refuses to want Bora's signature. Lucy walks up to the two, wishing to thank them by treating them out. She explains that Bora was using the illegal magic charm, which attracts people's hearts to the user. Natsu's interruption took away that effect. She goes on to say that she's a mage looking to join a guild, explaining what such is as well, to Natsu, who already knows, but she doesn't know that. Remembering that the two were looking for someone, she asks as to who it is. They reply that it's the dragon Igneal, which shocks her, making her remark that such a thing would never be in town. As she turns to leave, Natsu and Happy kneel and bow down fully in gratitude, much to Lucy's embarrassment. Natsu, wanting to properly thank her, offers her Bora's autograph, to which she furiously rejects. Later on a park bench, Lucy reads about the exploits of the Fairy Tale Guild in the Sorcerer magazine, when Bora suddenly jumps out in front of her from the bushes having eavesdropped on her. Unbeknownst to Lucy, he casts the charm magic upon her once again as he offers to help her join Fairy Tale if she joins his boat party later that night. She agrees, dressing up for the occasion. On the boat, Bora offers her a drink, but she slaps it away, remarking that it's a sleeping drug and that she has no intentions of becoming his girl. He then reveals himself to be a slave trader and plans to sell Lucy along with the other girls on the boat. With his goons holding her still, he takes her celestial spirit keys and, as they're useless to him, throws them out the window. Just as Lucy is about to be branded, Natsu suddenly crashes through the roof and Happy helps Lucy escape. Happy's magical wings soon wear off and they both drop into the sea, where Lucy dives underwater and miraculously finds her keys. With them, she calls upon the celestial spirit Aquarius, who, after a warning to never drop the keys again, summons a powerful wave that shipwrecks Bora's boat ashore. Aquarius, however, catches Lucy and Happy in her wave as well and flushes them aboard the boat. From there, Lucy worriedly rushes to help Natsu, who turns out to be completely competent in battle, actually being a mage himself. Using his fire dragon slayer magic, Natsu easily defeats Bora and his goons, but overdoes it, thus destroying a large portion of Harjian's port. The arrival of military soldiers forces them to run away from the scene. Natsu grabs onto Lucy and tells her that if she follows him, she can join Fairy Tale. A day or so later, Lucy arrives at the Fairy Tale Guild, in awe and mostly shocked at the many varied personalities of its members. A brawl develops in front of her, started by Natsu, and during that fight she meets other members, Grey and Mira Jane. She also comments that none of the guild members are acting normal. The brawl is eventually stopped by Fairy Tale's guildmaster Makarov before it escalates into one with uses of magic. Makarov initially begins to scold the members for their destructive actions, but soon breaks into an inspiring speech about following the way of Fairy Tale. Night falls, and Lucy opts to have her members stamp on the back of her right hand. Natsu is looking for another job on the guild's request board, but overhears that Macau Conbolt, a Fairy Tale member, has been missing for a week, and his son Romeo wishes for Makarov to look for him, which the latter refuses to do. 
Natsu punches the board and leaves with Happy. Curious, Lucy asks Mira Jane what's wrong with him, and she explains that perhaps Natsu sees his own past happening with Romeo. In the past, his foster parent Igniel the Fire Dragon suddenly disappeared. Out of curiosity, Lucy decides to go along with them into the furiously snowing mountains and begins to regret coming because of the sheer cold. Stealing Natsu's blanket and wrapping herself up in it, she then summons her celestial spirit Orologium, a clock spirit with a compartment wherein she can hide herself for warmth. One Vulcan, a monster Macau had been subduing, suddenly appears and attacks Natsu before kidnapping Lucy, as it likes women. The Vulcan takes her to its cave, where it parades around her until Orologium disappears. As the Vulcan advances, Natsu catches up and demands to know where Macau is. Just as the Vulcan appears to confide in Macau's whereabouts, he abruptly pushes Natsu off a cliff instead. Enraged and horrified, Lucy summons the perverted Zodiac spirit Taurus. Taurus and the Vulcan immediately begin to battle, but stop as Natsu reappears, having been saved by Happy. He knocks out Taurus, thinking it's another monster. Natsu then fights and swiftly defeats the Vulcan. Much to their surprise, the Vulcan actually is Makau, who had been taken over by the Vulcan's magic. Having been smashed into the wall, Makau falls through a hole in the wall and is saved from falling down the mountain thanks to the combined efforts of Natsu, Happy, Lucy, and the revived Taurus. Makau, now back up, is found to have been seriously wounded, and Natsu resorts to the extreme of burning one of Makau's wounds shut, which brings him back to consciousness. He tells them that he had successfully subdued 19 other Vulcans, but had been taken over by the 20th one. At this, Lucy is in awe and feels that she's no match for them. They then return to Fairy Tale's town, Magnolia, and Macau reunites with his son, Romeo. Daybreak Arc As Lucy is settling into her new home, she finds out that Natsu and Happy have brazenly broke in. As she attacks and scolds Natsu, Happy sharpens his nails on the wall, distracting her from Natsu, who then peeks at her writings. She dives for them, keeping them away from Natsu, and demands that they leave, which Natsu refuses to do. Giving up, she offers the two a cup of tea. Lucy teaches them how the celestial spirit keys work and the fundamentals of making contracts with the spirits. She summons the spirit of her recently bought Nikora key. His peculiar appearance stirs Natsu and Happy's pities, believing Plu to be a failure on Lucy's part. She argues that Nikora is a canine spirit and proceeds to contract with him. In a language that only Natsu seems to understand, Plu apparently suggests that they should form a team, to which both mages adhere. The first mission is to steal a book, which involves an owner looking to hire a blonde maid, and that makes Lucy think Natsu tricked her. Upon arriving in the town of Shiratsume, Natsu complains about being hungry and goes off to a restaurant with Happy, while Lucy leaves them be to look around town. She returns in a maid costume, shocking both of them, as they only meant it as a joke. Regardless, they go to KB's house to meet with their client and discuss the mission, and are stunned to discover that the reward has been raised by ten times the initial amount. Impassioned, they head to Everloo's mansion, where Lucy attempts to be hired, but is rejected for being too ugly for Everloo's tastes. This infuriates her vanity. With infiltration no longer an option, they resort to invasion, and decide to come through the roof of the mansion. They then try to sneak around to find the book, but are quickly found by Everloo's maids, who are instantly defeated by Natsu. They eventually come across a library, and after a bit of searching, find the book they have been hired to destroy, Daybreak. Just as Natsu is about to destroy it, Lucy snatches it off of him, claiming that it's a book by the famous author Kemuzalion, and that she's never seen it before. She refuses to allow Natsu to incinerate the book. Everloo appears at this moment, diving up from the floor, and after a short appraisal of his own genius, summons the Vanish Brothers to deal with the fairy tale mages. Amidst the commotion, Lucy skims the book and discovers something within the contents that makes her rush off. She asks Natsu to buy her some time, as she apparently decodes the hidden meaning of the book. She somehow makes it to the mansion's sewers, and through the enhanced reading speed provided by her Gale Force reading glasses, Lucy successfully discovers the secret within the book. Everloo abruptly reappears and ambushes her, grabbing her arms and threatening to break them unless she tells him her discovery. She refuses to say anything and is released when Happy strikes Everloo in the face. Lucy and Everloo engage in battle. Everloo's selfish nature is revealed when he tells Lucy how he forced Camuzalion to make that book about him. Lucy, however, tells him that the book contains a further secret which proves that Everloo doesn't deserve it. With this declaration, she summons the celestial spirit Cancer. Everloo summons his own celestial spirit Virgo in response, but Natsu accidentally arrives with her because he was grabbing her as she was called. At Lucy's request, he punches Virgo into the ground while Cancer and herself defeat Everloo. They return to KB's mansion, and Lucy returns the book. He initially wishes to burn it, much to Natsu's chagrin. KB then reiterates his wishes to get rid of the book, to burn it. He then explains his past, as well as why he wishes to do that. However, just as he's about to proceed with incinerating it, the book bursts into life. The letters rearrange themselves with the book's title, becoming Dear KB. 
Lucy explains that Zaleon placed the spell on the book and dedicated it to his son. Much to her dismay, Natsu and Happy say they can't accept the reward because they didn't specifically do what they were asked to do. They were asked to destroy it. On their way home, Natsu realizes that Lucy's earlier protectiveness over her writings is because she is writing a book herself. Embarrassed, she desperately asks him not to tell anyone. Eisenwald arc. Back at the Guild, Lucy looks for another request poster, and while talking with Mira Jane, learns about the organization of guilds and the existence of illegal guilds called Dark Guilds. Natsu frightens her and then tells her to hurry and find a new job for them, as it's her turn to choose one. However, she no longer wishes to work with him. Grey explains that she should feel no need to team up with anyone anymore, complimenting her on her work, but she explains that Natsu did nearly everything. As Natsu and Grey begin to brawl, Loki flirts with Lucy, but quickly runs away when he finds out that she's a Celestial Spirit Mage. He then returns to tell Natsu and Grey that the S-Class Mage, Urza Scarlet, has returned. Urza accordingly arrives with the large horn of a demon that she had slain, and after scolding several members, turns to Grey and Natsu, and asks them for their help with a mission. Although Natsu and Grey both refuse, it seems to have fallen on deaf ears, as Urza immediately sets forth. Mira Jane heralds the creation of this team as possibly the strongest team in fairy tale. Mira Jane also asks Lucy to tag along in order to keep Grey and Natsu from killing each other. On the day of their departure in the train station, she keeps the two from breaking into a brawl by lying that Urza is approaching. Upon her arrival, Lucy introduces herself to Urza, and Natsu challenges Urza to a fight once their mission ends, to which she readily accepts. The team boards the train, and after knocking Natsu out to relieve him from his motion sickness, Urza explains the mission to her teammates. On her last job, Urza apparently overheard guard members talking about an accursed object called Lullaby and a mage named Aragor. She admits that she failed to recognize the gravity of the overheard conversation and only realized her mistake upon returning home. She recalls that Aragor was a member of the Dark Guild Eisenwald and claims that such people would be up to no good. The mission planned is to walk into Eisenwald and destroy them. Pretty simplistic stuff. Completely preoccupied with the mission briefing, the team disembarks from the vehicle. A moment too late, they realize that a still unconscious Nazi was forgotten in their compartment. They rush back to retrieve him, and Urza gets happy to use an emergency stop signal lever to stop the train. They race towards it on a magical four-wheeled train. Just as they arrive at the train, Natsu crashes out of one of the windows and lands headfirst into Grey. After a bit of convenient amnesia, Natsu informs Lucy and the others that he got attacked on the train by a member of the Eisenwald Guild who had a strange flute displaying a skull with three eyes. This description reminds Lucy of a story about the cursed flute, Lullaby, which kills anyone who hears melodies played from it. With this shocking revelation in hand, they rush towards the train station. On the way there, Happy mentions that he meant to tell Lucy something but forgot, and as they try to enter the station, Lucy carries Natsu in, though she causes his motion sickness doing this as she's considered a means of transport. Inside, they're confronted by Eisenwald and Aragor, who explains that his plan is to use the station's loudspeakers to broadcast lullaby. Distracted by Aragor, Grey and Urza fail to notice one of Eisenwald's members, Kageyama, attacking Lucy. Natsu, however, manages to save her in the nick of time. Aragor then flees, and Urza orders Natsu and Grey to chase after him while she and Lucy deal with the rest of the Dark Guild. Using her magic, the knight Urza quickly dispatches all of her foes with assists from Lucy, who summons the Celestial Spirit Cancer. One member, however, escapes, and Urza calls upon Lucy to give chase to him. Lucy, along with Happy, loses sight of him and eventually reunites with the others beside a stabbed Kageyama. The two men find out that they've been trapped in a barrier of impassable wind, having been tricked by Aragor. At this moment, Happy finally remembers his message for Lucy. Upon Virgo's request, the Maiden Gold Key, previously owned by Everlu, was to be transferred to Lucy's ownership. Foregoing the usual process of contracting, Lucy summons Virgo and asks for the latter to use her superior digging powers to create a safe path of escape for them to use. Natsu immediately rushes ahead with Happy to defeat Aragor. Bringing with them the injured Kageyama, Lucy, Urza, and Grey continue to travel along the train tracks and eventually stumble upon Natsu, who successfully defeated Aragor. As the team rejoices, Kageyama unexpectedly makes a break for it, taking the flute with him. He aims to complete Eisenwald's original mission, which was to assassinate all the guild members present in the annual meeting held in the town of Clover. Team Natsu rushes to subdue him, however they eventually discover that their assistance wasn't needed, as Master Makarov managed to sway Kageyama from his original purpose. The guild masters, as well as Team Natsu, begin to celebrate their apparent victory when all of a sudden, the flute begins to speak, and manifests as a gargantuan demonic form, which was said to be the true embodiment of the cursed lullaby. Urza, Natsu, and Grey engage it in melee and swiftly defeat the monster. Their battle, however, inadvertently destroys the regular guild meeting hall, prompting Lucy and the other fairy tale members to make a quick getaway. 
Sub-Zero Emperor Lion arc. Natsu and Happy invite Lucy to embark on an S-Class mission with them. She's horrified once she learns that, enticed by the hefty reward of such a mission, Happy and Natsu decided to steal the mission's flyer. Natsu attempts to relieve her by saying it was the least paying out of the available S-Class jobs, but that only makes things worse for her. Lucy eventually concedes upon learning that a golden key will also be given as a reward. As the trio prepares to leave for Galuna Island, several sailors and fishermen discourage them, claiming that the island is haunted. The encounter with the fishermen delays the mages, and Grey eventually catches up to them. He originally intended to bring them back to the guild, however gets sidetracked as Natsu taunts him and is forced to join. Together, they head for Galuna Island, accompanied by Bobo, the only fisherman who was brave enough to set sail towards the accursed island. The group continues forth when Bobo abruptly disappears in the middle of the sea. Worried, Happy dives into the ocean to search for him underwater, but to no avail. As he resurfaces, Lucy along with the rest of the team watches in horror as a gigantic tidal wave appears before them and eventually engulfs their little boat. Presumably a day before they crashed ashore, Lucy gains consciousness first, and asks if the others were fine as well. After Grey concedes to accompany them entirely to the mission, they all venture to the island and eventually meet the denizens of Galuna and learn that the curse inflicting them had apparently turned them into demons. The mayor of the town asks them to destroy the moon, believing it'll free them from the curse. Realizing that the task he requires is impossible, Lucy and the others decide to investigate the island, and they soon encounter and defeat a giant mouse named Angelica. Angelica leads them to a huge temple where they discover the monster Deliora. After hearing about the plot to free Deliora and destroy the town, Lucy and Happy hurry off to warn and save the townsfolk. Lucy prepares very simple traps in front of the entrance to the village, which Happy pokes fun at. However, Natsu, who is rushing towards the village, falls for Lucy's trap. After all the work Lucy had put into it, their opponents effortlessly fly over to the village, preparing to drop a poisonous substance. Natsu redirects the poison, and Virgo saves the mare from being hit, but the village is destroyed. As Sherry Blendy, one of the people behind Lion Vastia's scheme, flies off with her mouse Angelica, Lucy grabs onto the rat's foot and tickles it, which results in all of them crashing to the ground. When they both recover from the fall, they start to fight against each other. Lucy immediately summons Taurus, however is surprised to discover Sherry's magic allows her to use her surroundings as puppets as long as they aren't humans. As Taurus turns against his owner, Lucy miraculously achieves Forced Gate Closure, which is said to be one of the greatest feats of any Celestial Spirit Mage. As the battle draws near, Lucy realizes that they're approaching the ocean, and so decides to summon Aquarius, despite being aware of the spirit's uncanny tendency to attack both friend and foe regardless. After Aquarius' attack, both mages are stunned and dizzy, and Lucy takes the opportunity to defeat Sherry. However, before Sherry loses consciousness, she commands her pet rat Angelica to avenge her. Lucy is about to be squished by Angelica when Urza unexpectedly shows up. Urza saves Lucy, but immediately admonishes her, stating that her only purpose was to retrieve the team who ran away. Grey argues and stands up to Urza, managing to convince her to abandon her original purpose momentarily in order to complete the S-Class mission. Lucy and Happy are visibly relieved by this, however both are terrified as soon as Urza reminds them of the punishment that awaits them at home. After Lion Vastia is defeated and Deliora is found to be dead, Team Natsu heads towards the camp set up for the villagers, but no one is seen there. As it turns out, the village has gone back to normal, as if someone reversed time. With the mayor still insistent on destroying the moon, Urza discovers the truth about the island, and she and Natsu apparently destroy the moon, effectively lifting the curse from Galuna Island. In actuality, the exhaust fumes from the moon drip crystallized and created a layer in the sky covering the entire island, and what they had destroyed wasn't the moon itself, but the aforementioned layering. Without the layer in the sky, everything returns back to normal again. The people in the village are revealed to have been demons to begin with, and that the curse that befell upon them was actually the side effects the Holy Moon Drip has on demons. It tampered with their memories, deluding them into believing they were humans all along. As their first S-Class mission is finally over, Urza declines the reward but takes the gold key when the villagers say that it's a sign of their friendship. Phantom Lord Arc as the team heads home from Galuna Island, Lucy and the others discover that their guild building has been sabotaged by their rival, Phantom Lord. Furious, Lucy and the rest of the team proceed to confront Master Makarov about the occurrences, but in turn, Lucy receives lenient punishment for inappropriately taking on an S-Class job. As Natsu and the Master bicker, Lucy questions why the latter is spanking her derriere and with a rather perverted expression on. Later in the evening, Team Natsu decides to crash in Lucy's apartment, explaining that no mages are allowed to be left alone at all costs, much to Lucy's chagrin. The next morning, Lucy along with her guildmates sees Levy McGarden, Jet, and Droy crucified to a tree with the Phantom Lord Mark branded on Levy. 
The Master then arrives and declares war against Phantom Lord. The fairy tale members head towards Phantom Lord's guildhouse and wreak havoc, while Lucy stays behind to watch over the injured Shadow Gear. As Lucy is walking back from her visit with grocery supplies, she's greeted by Juvia and Sol from Element 4. She attempts to battle them after finding out that they're associated with Kajil Red Fox, but is very overpowered, which leads to her capture and her dropping her keys. Lucy is later seen being used as bait to help seal Master Makarov's magic power. Lucy awakens at Phantom's headquarters and learns from the Guildmaster, Jose Porla, that her father sent them to retrieve his daughter. In order to escape, Lucy says she needs to use the bathroom, but is shocked when Master Jose claims such old tricks will never work on him and offers a rusty bucket instead. Lucy proceeds to take up his suggestion, surprising Master Jose with her brazenness. As he turns away, congratulating himself for being such a gentleman, Lucy forcefully kicks him in between his legs and runs away. He follows her and corners her into a dead end. Lucy, somehow believing that Natsu will be there to save her, jumps off the tower and, as expected, Natsu indeed appears and catches her as they freefall into the ground. They return to Fairy Tale afterwards. Back at the ranch, Lucy blames herself for the recent events and explains how it had been her father who was responsible for pulling the strings behind Phantom Lord. Her friends try to cheer her up, but to no avail. As the war with Phantom Lord continues, Mira Jane feels it better to hide Lucy to protect her and puts the latter to sleep. With transformation magic, she disguises herself as Lucy, while Rita springs the real one to Fairy Tail's safe house. However, thanks to Gajil's keen nose, he manages to find the real Lucy and forcefully takes her back to the Phantom Lord headquarters. After being beaten and tortured by Gajil, Natsu and Happy show up to rescue Lucy. As Natsu and Gijil's battle progresses, Lucy realizes Natsu is on the verge of being defeated, and she calls upon the only key she has remaining, the one she got from Galuna Island, Sagittarius. Sagittarius shoots his arrows at a machine which catches fire, so that Natsu can eat that fire and power up. Fired up, he manages to defeat Gijil. Upon Phantom Lord's defeat, and with a little encouragement from her injured comrades, also being held and released by the Magic Council Knights, Lucy sets out alone toward the Hartfelia Manor to meet her father for the first time in a year. When Lucy arrives at the manor, she's happily greeted by her old servants. They deck her in fancy clothing and wait outside as Lucy goes to her father's office. Lucy enters and her father explains that the reason he sent Phantom Lord to get her was because her husband had been decided. By him. Lucy says not to misunderstand her and that she came back to cut ties with him instead, as well as to make sure he would never threaten or come near Fairy Tale again. She shows her resolve by ripping her elegant attire and claims that she doesn't need material things to be contented. She's then seen visiting her mother's grave as the others come to take her back to Fairy Tale. As she reveals the superfluous wealth of the Hartfelia family, the rest of Team Natsu is completely stunned. Loki arc. Since Lucy's cut ties with her family and noticing Lucy worrying about her little amount of money, Mira Jane suggests they do a simple acting job at a theater. She, along with the rest of Team Natsu, are originally only to do some small acts to inspire bystanders to come see a play. However, with all the theater's actors having walked out, Lucy and the rest of Team Natsu are forced to act as the leads themselves. Lucy is cast as Princess Yanderika, Happy is given the task of carrying a dragon suit that Natsu is in, and they're given a week to rehearse. Their show is atrocious, barely makes sense as a story in general, and they eventually destroy the theater. But despite all this, they're hailed as a success to the point that they're kept there for another week, doing three performances a day, despite the apparent lack of a theater. Upon completing another mission earlier than expected, the gang decides to stay an extra night at an inn before departing. With the others engaged in an intense pillow fight, Lucy goes for a walk and meets two rogue mages. The rogue mages cast a spell on her and are about to have their way until Loki appears and rescues her from them. As a token of appreciation for having found her keys earlier with the Phantom Incident and for rescuing her as well, Lucy invites Loki to go to a local bar with her. There, she tries to find out why he doesn't like Celestial Spirit Mages, but he refuses to answer. As she thanks him again and is about to leave, Loki suddenly grabs Lucy's hand, embraces her, and says he doesn't have much time left. Not wanting to get her involved, he quickly passes this off as a joke, which he receives a slap for. Later at the guild, Lucy, who's still upset from the events of the previous night, learns that Loki had broken up with all of his girlfriends. She summons the Celestial Spirit Crux, an expert on Celestial Spirit magic, to ask about Loki's history with Celestial Spirit mages. Grandpa Crux provides Lucy with a very brief story about Loki and the late Celestial Mage Karen Lilica of Blue Pegasus. Lucy then recalls about Loki's vague joke and ponders about what he truly tried to imply. Around that time, Grey appears and informs her that Loki has left Fairy Tale and is nowhere to be found. Realization dawns on Lucy and she springs into action, knowing fully as to where Loki is. 
She heads to Karen's grave, where he confesses that he actually is the celestial spirit Leo and Karen was his former summoner. He claims to have killed Karen and, as punishment, was banished to the human realm. Loki then recounts the whole story of him and Karen. After he finishes, Lucy says that Karen's death wasn't his fault and that she'll save him no matter what. She tells him that if he's doomed to perish because of one incident that wasn't his fault, then she'll change the rules of the Celestial Spirit world. At this declaration, the Celestial Spirit King appears before them and says that despite the power he beholds, the rule is absolute, and that Loki had inadvertently been the source of Karen's death. Lucy adamantly refuses any punishment to be inflicted on her friend and manages to summon all of her spirits at once, surprising the king and Loki greatly. Moved by her resilience to protect her friend, the king decides that Loki will instead be rendered a different punishment. Rather than dying, he would dedicate his life to serve Lucy as her guardian. His key materializes and Lucy officially becomes Loki's new owner. Owner doesn't, doesn't sound right. Lucy becomes Loki's new summoner. Tower of Heaven arc. Out of gratitude, Loki gives Lucy and Team Natsu tickets to a resort as he proceeds to carry her bridal style and claim to talk about their future. Later on, the team arrives at their vacation spot and decompresses. However, problems arrive and Urza gets kidnapped by her old friends. Lucy and her team, along with Juvia, aided by Natsu's heightened sense of smell, follow Urza to the Tower of Heaven. There they go on a quest to rescue Urza from the clutches of Jalal Fernandez and his minions. While looking for Urza, Lucy and Juvia encounter the Hawk, Vidaldus Taco, one of Jalal's top three fighters and a member of the guild team Trinity Raven. As they fight, Taka uses his Rock of Succubus to enslave Juvia. As Juvia fights Lucy, Lucy hears the real Juvia's voice and summons Aquarius through Juvia's water body. Lucy and Juvia join hands as Aquarius attacks, and together they perform Unison Raid, defeating Vidaldus for good and surprising Jalal, since many mages practice for years, only to never achieve that feat. After this, Simon asks Grey to lead everyone off the tower, and Lucy watches from afar in a boat as Natsu defeats Jalal and completely destroys the tower. As Urza's friends leave to try to learn more about the outside world before truly trying to live a new life, Lucy sees them off together with the rest of the fairy tale members by making some fireworks with her celestial spirit magic. Battle of Fairy Tale Arc. When Team Natsu returns to the guild, they find its reconstruction complete, and Kana Alberona shows them around. Makarov startles them with the introduction of two new members, Juvia and Gajil. After settling down, they sit down for a song from Mira Jane. This calm state doesn't last long, though, as the two Dragon Slayers soon cause a large brawl. Though Lucy is supposed to be the interviewee in the Weekly Sorcerer magazine for Fairy Tale, the reporter, Jason, instead ignores her throughout the whole time as he constantly runs around in excitement, asking different guild members questions. Not giving up, Lucy decides to dress as a bunny girl and go onto the stage, hoping to gain attention, only to fail as Gajil appears next to her and surprises everybody with his singing performance. He even threatens Lucy with a stare to force her to dance as he sings. A few days later, Lucy desperately looks for jobs to pay her rent and asks Natsu and Happy to help her out. Much to her dismay, Natsu is feeling under the weather and goes home to rest. Admitting defeat, Lucy goes home. She arrives in her apartment and finishes her work. She decides to sleep but is startled when she finds Happy and Natsu asleep in her own bed. Happy explains that Natsu had been feeling ill, similar to when he ate Laxa Strayer's lightning. He then goes on to explain about the strongest members of the guild, the strongest probably being guild arts, and then gives Lucy a flyer about the Magnolia Harvest and the Miss Fairy Tale competition that's being run alongside it. He says it'll solve all of her monetary problems as the competition offers a huge reward for the winner. During the contest, Lucy in a cheerleader getup performs alongside her spirits. She is, however, interrupted by Evergreen, a member of the Thunder God tribe who proceeds to turn her into stone along with the other participants. Later on, Lucy and the other victims are de-petrified as Urza successfully defeats Evergreen. Lucy quickly jumps into battle, easily escaping from Freed Justine's barrier set up around the guild hall. She encounters Brickslow, another Thunder God tribe member, and is attacked by his puppets, consequently dropping her keys. He's about to finish her off when Loki summons himself to save her and fulfill his promise to her. Well, not fulfill it. He's doing his job. Loki, having significantly powered up since returning to the Stellar Plane, easily gains the upper hand in battle as he proceeds to defeat Brickslow. The latter, however, reveals his trump card, the Figure Eyes, which allow him to turn anything he sets his eyes on into his dolls and control them. Unable to use their vision, the tables turn for Loki and Lucy as Brickslow overpowers them. In the end, their immense trust in one another pushes through. Through lion brilliance, Loki momentarily blinds Brickslow, paving a way for Lucy to subdue him. Through their solid partnership, Loki and Lucy manage to completely defeat their opponent. 
Her feat shocks Gajil, who doesn't deem Lucy to be a particularly strong mage. After the battle, Lucy collapses from exhaustion, and Loki returns her keys to her, stating that he will always be there for her. He also jokingly remarks that it's the power of their love that enabled them to win. After the incident, Fairy Tail finally performs on the Fantasia Parade in the city. There, Lucy performs on a float together with Kana, Levi, and Biska. Oration Say's Arc Lucy is one of the members chosen, along with Natsu, Grey, and Urza, to represent Fairy Tail as part of an alliance for the upcoming battle against one of the strongest dark guilds, the Oration Say's. Team Natsu heads to the villa of Blue Pegasus' guildmaster, Bob, to meet up with the rest of the members of the alliance, the Allied Forces, a league formed by four legal guilds. Fairy Tail, Blue Pegasus, Lamia Scale, and Cade Shelter. As Fairy Tail arrives, the Trimens of Blue Pegasus welcome them, flirt with the ladies, and openly ignore the boys. As the rest of the Allied Forces members arrive, they proceed to carefully plan out their attack on the Orashion Seis, who are aiming to set into motion the powerful Nirvana. Unbeknownst to them, however, their opponents are fully aware of their plans and catch them off guard. In the attack, the Orashion Seis mages not only overwhelm the Allied Forces completely, but they manage to kidnap Kate Shelter's Wendy Marvel. In the battle, Urza is poisoned by Kubelios, Orashion Seis is Cobra's snake, and Lucy stays stays behind to watch over her. Blue Pegasus's Hibiki then informs Lucy that her reputation has suffered quite the blow, as she's also blamed for her team's destructive tendencies. She quickly explains none of it had been her doing at all, but understands that the damage had been done regardless. Natsu, having successfully rescued Wendy, returns to Urza's location and pleads for the younger mage to heal his injured hand. As Wendy sets into work, they see a black light in the distance. A black light. Not like a black, not like a black light, but like a, like a black... A black light? That sounds- that's such a weird thing to say. Natsu rushes towards it, believing that the revived Jalal is there as well. Distracted over Natsu's vague outburst, Lucy and the rest of the party are surprised to see Urza has disappeared as well. Hibiki proceeds to explain the truth about Nirvana's fearsome nature. As they make their way towards the light, they encounter Grey, standing above Natsu, about to deliver a finishing blow. Thinking Grey has yielded to the darkness, Lucy summons Sagittarius as he fires an arrow to save Natsu. Grey, with quotation marks, then proceeds to freeze Happy and shoots a blast at Lucy, who is saved by Hibiki. As Lucy and the team finally realize what's actually happening, Grey transforms into Lucy, tugs on her blouse upward, and brazenly flashes Lucy's bosom to the gaping audience. Quote, Lucy, then makes Sagittarius shoot Hibiki in the back. With everyone confused, the real Lucy tells Carla to take Wendy and run, then forces Sagittarius' gate closed. The other Lucy then summons Sagittarius and orders him to shoot Carla down. Soon after, Angel appears, saying it's not necessary, and the other Lucy turns out to be the twins that make up the celestial spirit, Gemini. Lucy determines that she has to take on Angel herself and summons Aquarius in the nearby river. Angel, also being a celestial spirit mage, opens the gate of the scorpion, Scorpio, who turns out to be Aquarius's boyfriend. Elated by the arrival of her beloved, Aquarius abandons Lucy's orders and the couple goes on a date. Taking advantage of the surprised Lucy, Angel attacks her, saying that Lucy has no hope of defeating her if she doesn't know the relationships between the celestial spirits, and proceeds to knock Lucy into the river. Desperate, Lucy then summons her trump card, Loki. Angel, unfazed, summons Loki's friend, Ares. Lucy is now distraught, saying that even Loki won't be able to fight. Seeing Ares, Lucy asks Angel where she got Karen's spirit, and Angel bluntly replies that she killed the celestial spirit mage and took her key. Not wanting the two friends to fight, Lucy tries to close Loki's gate, but he refuses because it's his duty to serve his master. Okay, I guess we are going with master then. As the two spirits fight, Angel sees Loki gaining the upper hand and decides to summon Kalem, who shoots both Loki and Ares through their stomachs. With Loki apologizing, both spirits fade away. Lucy, upset, calls Angel the scum of celestial spirit mages for treating her own spirit so cruelly. She summons Taurus, only to see him get defeated by Gemini. After Lucy collapses from exhaustion, Gemini gives her a savage beating. Even though she's beaten up, Lucy lifts her head and demands Angel release Ares from her contract. She says the spirit has suffered enough from her formerly abusive partner, and that Ares deserves to be reunited at last with her friend, Loki. Angel asks what she's willing to give in exchange, and Lucy says she'll give her anything but her keys. Angel decides that Lucy's life will be the price, and orders Gemini to finish her off. I don't know, seems like a fair trade to me, Lucy didn't say that wasn't on the table. However, before administering the final blow, Gemini goes through Lucy's memories and sees how much Lucy truly loves and cares for celestial spirits. Thus, Gemini can't bring themselves to kill her. Angel closes Gemini's door and orders Calum to finish Lucy off. Hibiki then appears and grabs hold of Lucy's neck. This shocks both Angel and Lucy, both thinking that he had turned to the darkness. 
Instead, Hibiki uses his archive to give Lucy a new magic, which he calls a super magic. With this, glowing orbs appear around Lucy, and she casts Uranometria to defeat Angel. After using the spell, Lucy doesn't seem to remember what happened. Angel then gets back up, saying that she'll not be defeated, and that the Orashion says never loses. Angel fires Calum, but just like Gemini, Calum has lost the will to attack Lucy due to her compassion for celestial spirits. As Angel falls into the water, Lucy tries to save Natsu from going down the river, but ends up in the same raft, heading towards a waterfall and falling over. Moments later, the two mages regain consciousness, and Lucy is astonished to find her wounds treated and outfit changed, courtesy of Virgo, who decks Natsu in a matching getup as well. During this moment, Sherry, who has fallen to the darkness, shows up and is about to attack both of them when Grey appears and apprehends Sherry. Lion follows suit, actually being alive and in good condition. Relieved to see that Lion is relatively unharmed, Sherry is released from the darkness and returns back to normal. After witnessing Nirvana's second stage, Lucy, Grey, and Natsu decide to climb up one of its legs to reach the series of towers perched atop the device's general body. When Lucy and Grey finally arrive in the capital of Nirvana, they meet up with Jura, Nikas, and Hadai, who explain that long ago, Nirvana was created by the race called Nervit for the purpose of peace. Ironically enough, it's now being used to execute evil intentions. As they go on to explain that Brain is the one controlling Nirvana, Midnight shows up to assassinate them and takes them aback with his powerful magic as he effortlessly slices a building in half. Hadai gives them a chance to escape, saying he'll take on Midnight. Eventually, Lucy, Grey, and Jura catch up to Brain, who's dragging an unconscious Natsu away. Brain reveals his plan to turn Natsu into a member of his new Orashion Seis and that his first target with Nirvana is Kate Shelter. At this, Natsu unexpectedly bites Brain's hand, successfully managing to release himself. Lucy and Grey plan to attack Brain, but Jura steps in himself and assaults Brain unmercifully with his rock magic. He demands Brain's reasons for wanting to destroy Wendy's guild, which catches the others off guard. After Brain's defeat, Lucy and the rest of her teammates head toward the capital summit, hoping to find any means to stop Nirvana. They unfortunately stumble upon nothing, but Wendy runs off, realizing a possible way to shut it down. Hot Eye, who unbeknownst to them is in fact Zero, telepathically communicates with the allied forces, saying he was unable to defeat Midnight, and the latter is now located at the bottom of the capital. Lucy, along with her companions, rushes towards Midnight's apparent location, where they stumble upon a set of doors which Natsu recklessly destroys. In the last moment, Jura realizes they fell into a trap and shields the younger mages with his earth magic and his own body. The explosion that follows gravely injures Jura, and Lucy, along with the others, treats him immediately. At this, Brain's apparently living staff, Clodoa, arrives and reveals he's actually the seventh member of the supposedly sixth member, Orashion Seis. He's then comically smacked around by Natsu. Levitating in the air, Clodoa reveals that Kate Shelter is made up of the descendants of the Nerva, thus they are the only ones who are able to steal Nirvana, and consequently must be eliminated. All of a sudden, Clodoa starts to attack Natsu and Grey, and even manages to sneak a peek at Lucy's panties before attacking her as well. You know, normal anime stuff. Clodoa then senses that all of the six have been defeated, and goes into a panic and declares that when all of the six prayers have fallen, Brain's other, more savage personality, Zero, emerges. At this moment, Zero himself arrives and ruthlessly beats Natsu, Grey, Lucy, and Happy to a pulp. Blood frenzied, he says that they're not defeated until they're completely reduced to nothing. As the allied forces briefly delay Zero's plan from unfolding, their friends call for the beat-up Lucy, Natsu, Grey, and Happy to get back on their feet and fight once again. It was Sherry's strong words that finally snapped some sense into Lucy, and the four of them determinedly stand back up. They immediately set forth towards the different Lacrima crystals that they must destroy. Despite her tenacity, however, Lucy is still very much exhausted and is running low on magic power. At a loss for what to do, and on the verge of tearing up, Lucy is surprised as Gemini, who took her form once again, suddenly appears before her and says that they'll take her place instead. Gemini, as Lucy, easily summons Taurus, who destroys the Lacrima at their signal. After the team's successful mission, Lucy and the members of Team Light celebrate their victory in Kate's shelter. It's there where the truth about the nature of Wendy's guild is revealed, which greatly astounds Lucy and her friends. She and the representatives of Fairy Tale eagerly invite Wendy to their guild, as the latter worries gravely on where she should go next. Just before Team Light disbands for good, Gemini, Scorpio, and Ares appear and offer Lucy their keys. They say that upon Angel's defeat and her arrest, their contracts were terminated. The three spirits would love more than anything to be in the hands of the kind-hearted celestial mage, Lucy. Lucy agrees, but says that she's astounded by the fact that she'll earn three new friends to her collection of keys just like that. Ares and Scorpio are surprised at their new status because they're used to being treated like objects by their previous owners. Lucy assures them that she'll never think like that, and since she treats Loki and other spirits that way, she'll give them the same treatment as well. 
Aerie smiles and says that they're all looking forward to working with Lucy. Adelas arc. With the Orashion Says defeated, Lucy heads back to Fairy Tale with her companions and Wendy. Wendy and Lucy are surprised when a loud bell in Magnolia chimes and it's revealed that Gildart's Clive has returned. Lucy tells Wendy a little bit about him, saying that Gildart's is supposedly the most powerful mage in Fairy Tale and that she's never seen him before. She then watches as he sends Natsu into the ceiling with one hand and is shocked to realize that he couldn't finish the hundred year old quest he was on. As Mistigan reveals the truth about Anima to both Wendy and Carla, Lucy is seen at the guild wondering about when the rain will stop and wishing something interesting would happen. Then, when Anima begins sucking Magnolia Town Orologium, who feels the fluctuation in space-time, appears and saves Lucy by hiding her in another space for a while. Lucy then finds herself alone in what is left of Magnolia and meets Mistigan for the first time. Mistigan tells her about Edelus, a parallel world, and explains the current situation to her. He then gives her a pill that will preserve her magic and sends her to Edelus. Lucy then goes on her own to search for his friends. In Lowen City, a group of soldiers mistake her for her Edelus counterpart and try to arrest her. Lucy struggles against the guards, and before Natsu can try to help her, she summons Scorpio and blasts all of the soldiers away. When they reunite, Lucy is overwhelmed at seeing them again, but gets shocked when she sees her Edelus counterpart, Lucy Ashley. She tells Natsu to take care of the rest of the soldiers, but Natsu tells her that she's the only one who can use magic, leading her to believe that she has become the strongest fairy tale mage. She then summons Ares, and they all escape to the forest. Lucy explains how she ended up in Edelus. Lucy Ashley comments on how they're still going to fight against the kingdom even though they can't control their magic properly, despite Earthland Lucy's protests that she can use hers. Lucy proclaims that as Fairy Tail's current strongest mage that she'll be the one to solve everything, to which Natsu, Carla, and Happy say they have no choice but to count on her as Wendy cheers her on. Arriving in the town of Sika, the team decides to stay the night in a hotel, where Lucy and her Edelus counterpart shower together. As they come out, Lucy Ashley proceeds to reveal her body to Natsu, but Earthland Lucy quickly intervenes and covers up. Natsu cracks up at this, and when Lucy demands to know why, he says that he finds it funny that the two Lucys take a bath together, which stuns the two. At this, Ashley asks Lucy to summon a spirit that could cut her hair to help people distinguish them. The next day, Lucy becomes furious with Ashley, who disappeared and left a note saying that she's going back to her guild. Her anger, however, quickly dissipates as she finds a book narrating the history of Edelus. While reading, she and Natsu notice that an airship has just landed. Listening to Natsu's idea of stealing the airship, Lucy decides to battle the royal army with Loki. However, Virgo comes out in his stead, as he apparently went out on a date and can't be summoned at the moment. When the mages are nearly captured by the royal army, a man with a magic four-wheeler arrives and saves Lucy and company, taking them out of the city. As they travel, the man introduces himself as Natsu the Fireball to them. In the capital, they witness their guild trapped inside a lacrima, and Natsu, enraged, moves to create a commotion. Lucy tearfully holds him back, placating him as she says she understands his pain as well. Later that day, she and Carla make up a plan to find out how they can turn the guild back to normal. Lucy plans on using Gemini to transform into Faust and read his mind. This plan is never completed as they're captured by Urza Nightwalker and her troops during their infiltration. In prison, she's put into a separate cell from Wendy and Natsu and is about to be executed. Moments later, Nightwalker arrives at Lucy's cell to kill her. The latter attempts to persuade the general, saying that her Earthland Urza is actually a member of Fairy Tale and is a good, responsible person that everyone can count on. However, Nightwalker is not swayed and tells Lucy not to confuse her with her Earthland counterpart. Nightwalker then suspends Lucy over a balcony and tells her that she's unfortunate because she likes to look at the suffering of others. She's known as the Fairy Hunter, as she's killed dozens of members of Fairy Tale. She then sarcastically comments that she'll be seeing Lucy before throwing the latter off the balcony. Luckily, Lucy is saved by Carla and Happy at the last moment. Carla tries to exploit Urza's lack of information and presents herself as Extalia's princess and daughter of the Queen. She then tricks Urza into revealing the location of Natsu and Wendy, and then tries to have the two Dragon Slayers released as well. Carla's deceit almost succeeds when the rest of the Royal Guards unfortunately arrive, and Panther Lily informs Urza that Carla and Happy are actually fallen, which is equivalent to traitors. All three flee immediately. Carla asks Lucy if she's angry at them, at which Lucy doesn't understand as to why she should be. Carla states that it's her fault that she got caught in the first place, and Lucy replies that they came to save her anyway. She then adds that she's more surprised by the fact that Carla is a princess. The group then tries to reach the West Tower, where Wendy and Natsu are both trapped. Unfortunately, Extalia troops face them in the air, and the magic militia awaits them on the ground, leaving them trapped. 
However, in a lucky twist of fate, Faust decides that now is the perfect time to invoke Code ETD, which transforms the Extalia troops into a giant cat lacrima. As the magic militia is distracted, Lucy, Happy, and Carla make their way to the basement of the West Tower, where they're ambushed by Urza Nightwalker and her soldiers once again. Just as Nightwalker is about to execute Happy, the soldiers behind her are suddenly blown away, and Lucy is overjoyed, as both Earthland, Urza, and Grey appear and join in the fray. She later learns that it's because of Gajil's Dragon Slayer magic that Urza and Grey were freed from the Lacrima. She also discovers that the reason she could employ her magic in Edelus was because Mystigan fed her X-Balls, a medicine that allows the Earthland mages to use magic in Edelus. Later, she runs around the castle with Grey and Natsu trying to locate the king. During that time, Lucy comments on how confusing the layout of the castle is, and that she wouldn't be surprised if there's even an amusement park inside. True to her prediction, the group actually encounters one, along with Hughes and Sugar Boy. Lucy then prepares to battle the two captains alongside Grey and Natsu. Hughes shows off his weapon, Command Tact, which allows him to control anything and everything within the amusement park. He then attacks Natsu with a roller coaster from behind. Lucy shouts at him before falling into Sugar Boy's trap, which makes both Grey and her sink into the ground. After Grey hauls her into the air, she attempts to free Natsu from the Hell roller coaster, but fails, as Hughes eventually makes them fall into a body of water. She then looks at Hughes in comical disbelief, as the latter laughs at a candid shot of Natsu and Lucy on the roller coaster. The presence of water makes Lucy realize that she can summon Aquarius, which she immediately does. However, the situation turns grim as Aquarius discovers that she has absolutely no control over the water, and finds out it's still Sugar Boy's territory. Lucy looks in shock before being engulfed with the water attack by Hughes. His attack somehow flushes Lucy into an outfit-changing device. Natsu then hatches a plan for Lucy to seduce Hughes with sexy clothing, but fails when Hughes, unfazed, attacks them using monsters located in the attraction anyway. Later, Lucy runs away from the horde of monsters, only to bump into Coco, who has Byro chasing after her. Byro then asks Coco to hand the key, referring to the one used for controlling the dragon chain cannon to him, but Lucy mistakes it as Byro asking for her celestial spirit keys instead. She engages Byro in battle and inadvertently defends Coco as well. Lucy summons Taurus, who is, however, quickly defeated by Byro's Flame Liquid. She then calls for Virgo, who successfully lands a hit on the opponent, causing him to fall into the hole she made. This backfires as Byro consumes his octopus liquid, turning him into a giant octopus-human hybrid and allowing him to successfully capture Coco. Virgo states that she can't do anything against such an opponent, and Lucy is forced to run. Virgo then gives Lucy the extending whip, Fleuve d'Etoile of the Eridanus constellation from the Celestial World, in order to conserve her magic power. Virgo's concern for her well-being lifts Lucy's spirits and drives her to fight for Coco. Seeing Byro hurt the younger girl repeatedly, Lucy states that protecting your friends is the most important thing. Employing Fleuve d'Etoile, she manages to tie up Byro's legs and have him hit Monster Academy. He subsequently catches fire thanks to Natsu's punch, which eventually leads to both Byro and Hugh's defeat. Before Coco can hand over the key, Sugar Boy slides by and takes it, subsequently being chased by Grey on a motorcycle. Lucy and Natsu chase after them, but Sugar Boy softens the floor, and Lucy gets stuck under Byro's tentacles with Coco. After the cannon is fired, Lucy reappears with Coco on her legion. Urza, Natsu, and Grey hop on, and they head for the Lacrima Island. By helping Natsu and the others, Lucy is able to buy enough time for Mystigan to send Fairy Tail back to their world. Lucy, as with the rest of her friends, is extremely flabbergasted upon discovering that Mystigan, in reality, is actually the Prince of Edelus. While helping the Exes escape from the Royal Army, Lucy along with Urza, Scarlet, Grey, and Coco are again ambushed by Urza Nightwalker and her force. The two Urzas battle against each other, and Lucy and the others fight against the rest of the army. Even with Loki's help, the sheer number of the Royal Army nearly defeats them until the Edelus Fairy Tale Guild appears and evens the fight. She's helped by her Edelus counterpart and watches the rest of the battle. Magic, however, is being taken away from Edelus at a crucial time. Although the royal army runs away, Lucy realizes that the whole guild is in a state of panic as well. Lucy tries to calm them down, only to be yelled at by her counterpart for not realizing that a magic guild can't possibly exist without magic. Lucy is later seen with Grey and the others as the anima begins to suck up the Exceeds and Earthland mages, commenting on the fact that since the anima is sucking magic power out of Edelus, it's kicking them out as well. Lucy then says goodbye to the Edelus fairy tale and travels back to Earthland with the others. After arriving back with her friends, Lucy is revealed to see that Magnolia is intact. She is also surprised when the Exceeds show up as well to reveal the truth about their plan to save the hundred unborn eggs. 
Eventually, they bid goodbye to the Earthland mages, and Lucy and her friends return to the guild. As they head out, they're surprised to see a smaller Panther Lily, when Panther Lily reveals that he's caught someone suspicious. Lucy and the others are shocked at the revelation of Lisana's Edelus counterpart, who was also sent to Earthland. She's later seen wondering what's going on when Lasana admits that she's actually the Earthland Lasana, and then along with the others, she helps Lasana return to her siblings. Tenro Island Arc As the guild celebrates the arrival of Lasana, Lucy is surprised to see that Evergreen and Juvia have changed their appearance. Moments later, she witnesses the guild starting another ruckus, and later tells Juvia not to strip just to impress Grey. After the guild's little skirmish is over, she wakes up to find everybody still asleep. Her eyes then fall upon Mira Jane, Lasana, and Elfman with their arms around each other. While looking at them, she comments on how happy she is for them to be able to see each other again. As she looks around again, she sees Natsu, bends down, and stares at his face, wondering if he's ever felt lonely due to him being unable to see Igniel. Lucy then comments about how cute Natsu can be while he's asleep. Seconds later, Natsu abruptly punches her in the face, and Lucy goes flying through the guild roof and into the river by her house. A few days later, she bathes by herself and gets a shock when she discovers that Kana is in the bathtub with her. Kana then talks a little with Lucy and confesses that she wishes to leave Fairy Tale. In the Guild House, Lucy relates this to Mira Jane, who comments that this happens to Kana every year. Lucy then wonders why several Guild members suddenly began taking on more jobs than usual. The day after, Lucy witnesses the announcement of the S-Class Mage promotion trial and is very surprised that there even exists such an event. As Lucy heads home, she stumbles upon a drunk Kana sleeping in the snow. She takes her home, where Kana reveals that the reason why she must at all costs become an S-Class mage. She adds that should she still fail this year, she'll leave Fairy Tale for good. Fired up over this, Lucy determinately joins the S-Class trial by becoming Kana's partner. On the day of the trials, the participants and their partners head towards Tenro Island, Fairy Tale's holy land, aboard a ship. Lucy complains about the blistering heat and says that she'll melt while sprawled in a lawn chair in what Levy calls a slovenly manner, and that Happy will eat her gloppy remains. Shortly after, the Master arrives and explains the rules of the first trial. As soon as the trials commence, the runes that Freed had been surreptitiously setting up moments before activate, effectively trapping the other participants who have no means of bypassing it. Waiting out the five-minute rules set up by the runes, Lucy and Kana quickly swim towards the island and are upset to discover that they're the last to arrive. Lucy attempts to lift Kana's spirits by saying a fortunate twist of luck usually happens in situations like this. Once they take the last unoccupied path, they eventually realize that they've ended up in a battle path and must face another team in order to progress through to the next level. To both girls' horror, they're confronted by Freed and Brixlow, whom they had no chance against during the Magnolia Festival battle, with Kana being completely overpowered by Freed and Lucy only being able to win against Brixlow thanks to Loki. Now at a terrible disadvantage, as Lucy can't possibly summon Loki, who had reprised his human self and partnered with Grey for the trials, Kana is surprised when Freed tells them to first put on more clothes, as their being clad in bikinis serves as a big distraction for him. Kana, realizing that Freed's weakness is women, takes advantage of the situation and unleashes the Sexy Lady card, which summons a throng of voluptuous women in skimpy swimsuits that surround Freed. This move manages to knock him out. Lucy attempts to help by summoning Virgo, who's only in her undergarments, but the spirit is easily taken out by Brixlow's dolls. His dolls continue to attack, and Kana makes an attempt to hit them using the Prayer's Fountain card, but misses. With the presence of water, Lucy then summons Aquarius and quickly calls out for Kana to anchor herself onto something. Aquarius's attacks successfully defeat Freed and Brixlow. Afterwards, the spirit banters with Kana, and Lucy notices how similar the two women are. At their opponent's defeat, a path is paved for Lucy and Kana to continue onward. Freed and Brixlow then talk about how they had intentionally allowed the two women to win, and how Freed feels he owes them, from the uproar they caused during the Magnolia Festival. He adds how Lucy and Kana were actually lucky to have run into them. Yeah, sure bud. Lucy and Kana meet up with the winners of the first trial, and welcome Grey and Loki upon their arrival. Master Makarov then announces those who have been defeated in the previous event, and Grey is openly shocked to discover that Team Kana had actually beaten Team Freed. As the Master finishes his announcement, Lucy mentally runs through the list of which teams took which possible path, and concludes that Evergreen and Elfman must have run into Mira Jane. She's surprised to find that while her conclusion is true, Team Elfman has also successfully defeated the Takeover Mage. Lucy then sees Happy worrying over Natsu brooding over something, and the Dragon Slayer comments that he's not depressed, but is thinking instead. Happy is absolutely flabbergasted at this, amazed that Natsu is actually thinking about something. Lucy wonders how lowly the Exceed thinks of his partner. Natsu abruptly stands up and challenges the remaining participants to see who will win. 
The master then reveals the next trial, which is for the competitors to locate the grave of Mavis Vermilion, Fairy Tale's first master, as well as its founder. As Lucy and Kana get on with the trial, they're suddenly chased by gigantic lizard-like creatures. Managing to evade their pursuers, Lucy contemplates on the master's words. The second trial tests their intelligence, and she repeats Makarov's clues in her head. She realizes with a jolt that she knows where Mavis' grave is, and she rushes off, with Kana right behind her and cheering her on. Unbeknownst to them, Grey and Loki follow after them. Later on, Lucy and Kana see the warning signal that Urza launched, calling for everyone to get into battle formation. Kana is extremely upset over the cancellation of the trials, and determinately says that she'll proceed with the second trial regardless. Grey and Loki then make themselves known and calm Kana down. The girls ask why the two boys were following them, and Loki proceeds to relate the truth, but is stopped by Grey. The Ice Mage drops the topic and suggests that they head back to the camp, as they know very little about the sudden enemy. As they make their way back to the base, they're suddenly ambushed by the members of Grimoire Heart, who they fight off against. Caprico, one of the Seven Sin of Purgatory, then teleports them away and announces that he'll be their opponent instead. As their fight begins, Caprico immediately kicks Lucy into a wall and continues kicking Grey and Loki. As she gets up, Caprico explains to the group what Grimoire Heart Guild is actually trying to accomplish by obtaining Zareph. Caprico then reveals himself to be the celestial spirit Capricorn, under the control of Zoldeo. Loki volunteers to fight the other spirit alone, saying that the human subordination magic Capricorn is under won't affect him as a spirit. Lucy is vehemently against the idea of leaving him behind, but Loki manages to persuade her. Before she heads off, she reminds him that no matter what, he must return to her. After Loki's battle with Capricorn, his key returns to Lucy's belt, and he informs her that Capricorn will join her side as well. Lucy then excitedly relays this to Grey and Kana. As the three walk together, Kana suddenly suggests that they split up to look for the Seven Kin. Lucy stammers her protests, and Kana says that she'll be with her. Grey reluctantly leaves them after a little disagreement. As the two walk together, Kana inquires about the location of Mavis's grave. Lucy then explains that she tried to associate different six-letter words with grave, and when asked about why it had to be six letters, she says that the six-hour time limit hinted at something being six letters. She then says the only word she came up with was demise, and that the letter E is suspicious as it pops up twice. She asks Kana if she remembers that the first paths were lined up according to alphabetical letters. Without warning, Lucy loses consciousness and falls on the ground as Kana secretly uses the sleep card on her. Kana then drags the sleeping Lucy a short distance away, but leaves her out in the open regardless. Still asleep, Lucy is happened upon by Kane Hikaru, another of the Seven Kin. Kane tries to stomp on her, but she wakes up just in time. Lucy then questions him about Kana's whereabouts, to which he replies that it doesn't matter because he'd kill her soon anyway. She then begins to wonder to herself how she got there, whether or not she was sleeping, as well as how she got separated from Kana, and then resolves to do something about Kane. Kane then runs behind a nearby tree, trembling and stating that he's strong and that it doesn't matter who his opponent is, they won't live if they face him. When Lucy tells him that anyone who challenges Fairy Tail will be challenged by her as well, he simply tells her to hold on a second and starts vigorously scratching his head. He then strikes a pose and tells her that they're going to fight. He adds that he'll also show her the power of his magic, Ushi no Kokumairi. He then pulls out a doll and asks Lucy for some of her hair, as his magic requires his opponent's hair for it to work. Lucy uh, immediately turns down this request, and Kane goes on to explain his ability, stating that if he's to put some of her hair onto Mr. Kersey, he'll be able to manipulate her movements. She states that after hearing that, she's definitely not going to give her her hair now. Kane is uh, gobsmacked at such a revelation, and Lucy asks if he's only realized that just now. Lucy claims that she's never heard of Kane's magic and believes that he's merely bluffing. To prove his abilities, Kane places wisps of his own hair on Mr. Kersey and hands it over to Lucy. She rams the doll against the ground and makes it do a split in midair before Kane angrily takes it back and starts chasing after her, stating that he's incredibly pissed off. Lucy berates herself and says that now is not the time to be playing around. She summons Taurus, who Kane effortlessly knocks out. She then calls for Sagittarius, who fires a few arrows, all of which Kane deflects easily before the spirit is defeated as well. Lucy then summons Scorpio, who uses Sandbuster, but the attack has no effect on Kane at all, and Scorpio is eventually knocked out too. As Lucy realizes Mr. Kersey is actually strengthening Kane depending on the material it's made of, Kane transforms the doll into a source of light and blows Lucy with a powerful blast. Mr. Kersey then changes into cotton, before transforming once again into iron this time. Kane dives forward to smash Lucy, but Natsu intervenes, kicks him in the face, and sends Kane flying over to Ultir, who easily sidesteps her teammate's body. Natsu asks Lucy what she's doing there, and she asks the same question of him, thanking her for saving her as well. 
Happy remarks that Lucy was sent flying in their direction rather ungracefully, to which Lucy asks if there's a cool way to be sent flying away. Lucy asks if Natsu had an opponent prior to her arrival, and the latter replies that Kane was his as Lucy couldn't take out the Grimoire Heart Mage. Lucy argues that she didn't intend to battle Kane anyway, and that it would have been a close fight, even for Natsu himself, to which he agrees back. Natsu says he would be able to take Kane down, and Happy states that Natsu faces two opponents now. The Dragon Slayer remarks that they themselves had another member on their side anyway. Natsu finally acknowledges the trials are put on hold, and offers to team up with Lucy for the time being. At this, the Celestial Mage remarks that it's pretty nostalgic. Happy says it makes him remember of the time back when they first met, and Natsu exclaims that he's all fired up now. Lucy and Natsu share a high five, and the two mages agree that their enemies should be taken down. Kane gets back on his feet and agrees to battle Natsu and Lucy by himself. Altir then takes her leave, and Lucy warns Natsu that they can't allow her or any of their enemies to do so. Natsu rushes at Altir, but Kane gets in the way. Lucy tries to help, but soon realizes that she's under Kane's control. The Grimoire Heart Mage reveals that he took a strand of her hair while chasing her from before. He takes his revenge by toying with her and manipulates her to attack Natsu. Natsu successfully avoids one of Lucy's attacks and prepares to strike back. However, Lucy's unpredictable movements prove too much for him to avoid. After a while, Natsu is eventually able to restrain her, and Happy steals Mr. Kersey. Kane, however, knocks Happy with one blow and tries to recover his doll, but Natsu takes it instead, trying to counterattack. Kane acts faster and delivers a powerful blow to Natsu, which sends the Dragon Slayer crashing and half buried into a pile of boulders. Natsu is unable to move on his own, and Lucy tries to summon Virgo but has no more magic power left and is subsequently captured and tortured by Kane. Natsu tells her to run, but Lucy refuses, prompting Kane to try to kill her by crushing her head. Before he can do it, Natsu grabs Mr. Kersey and manipulates Lucy into repeatedly assaulting Kane. He then ignites her arm with his Dragon Slayer magic and gives the doll to Happy. The Exceed then rushes towards Kane with blinding speed. Lucy, aflame, lands a powerful kick on Kane's face, which finally knocks the Grimoire Heart Mage down. Having triumphed over the opponent, Lucy proceeds to pull Natsu out from the debris that he's buried under, without having much of a feat. Happy then suggests Natsu break free on his own by destroying the boulders with his flames. Natsu effortlessly frees himself and looks around to discover that Zeref, who was previously nearby together with Altir, is missing. Natsu remarks that something is getting in the way of his sense of smell. Lucy then raises her leg and says she has to look for Kana. Natsu asks why she's raising her leg, and Lucy realizes that Happy is toying with Mr. Kersey, who still has a strand of her hair attached to it. She begins to chase after Happy, and Natsu says that it's time to take a nap. Lucy then says, while bending Happy's body with Mr. Kersey, that they can't afford to rest because she's worried about Kana, and they must search for Zeref as well. They then begin to speak about Grimoire Heart's goals, and Natsu says that as they had not laid a finger on Master Makarov, they will never be able to leave Tenro Island. Lucy then realizes that Grimoire Heart must have a ship anchored somewhere on the island, and asks for Happy to go search for it. But the Exceed replies that he's out of magic power. Natsu then states that they should head back to where Makarov is resting, and that they'll have Panther Lily or Carla take care of it instead. Team Natsu arrives at where the Master is recovering, and finds Mest back with Fairy Tail once again. Natsu inquires on where Mest had been, and Lucy remarks that he's not actually a member of Fairy Tail, rather he's part of the Council. He then tells Lucy that his real name is Dorenbolt, and Wendy proceeds to politely question him. Dorenbolt assures the Dragon Slayer not to worry because he came there to help him, which surprises Happy and Carla. He then says that with his powers, everyone can leave the island safely, but Lucy and the others refuse. Despite Dorenbolt's attempts to convince them otherwise, by saying should the Council get wind of occurrences on the island, they ought to take drastic measures, to which Happy wonders if they mean firing Ethereum once again, Lucy and the Fairy Tale Mages are determined to stay on Tenro Island and fight. Later on, Lucy changes into the clothes brought to her by Virgo. She, along with Wendy and Natsu, try to convince Dornbolt to stall the Council from interfering while they defeat Grimoire Heart. As Grimoire Heart's attack on Tenro Island escalates into a full-blown war against Fairy Tail, Lucy, Wendy, Natsu, Happy, and Carla face off against Blue Note Stinger from the Seven Kin, but are easily wiped out. Lucy falls to the ground, completely overwhelmed by the strength Blue Note possesses. At this point, Kana suddenly arrives and attacks Blue Note with her cards and tries to follow with Fairy Glitter, but fails due to Blue Note's magic and her own inability to fully control such high-level magic. Kana asks for Lucy's forgiveness for abandoning her earlier, and reassures the Celestial Mage that she'll defeat Blue Note with Fairy Glitter. Lucy is delighted to hear this and asks her if Kana found it on the First Master's grave. Upon hearing this, Natsu remembers about the trials, but Kana tells everyone to forget about it and help her fight instead. Before she can finish talking, however, Blue Note employs his magic and sends the fairy tale mages flying. 
He then approaches Kana and tells her that he'll be taking the fairy glitter, but Kana tells him that only mages from the guild can use it. Bluno dismisses her claim, saying that all magic originates from one single source. Lucy then recalls that she's heard about this before, as Blue Note levitates Kana and prepares to kill her, saying that he'll relieve her of the burden of beholding a magic as powerful as fairy glitter. Natsu, burying his head into the ground, releases his fire dragon's roar and successfully counters Blue Note's gravity magic, allowing Kana to subsequently attack him once more with fairy glitter. The attack, however, is parried onto the ground, and Blue Note further taunts her about her magic and her fairy glitter. Kana is stunned by the fact that he's still standing and unscathed at that. Blue Note explains that he can extract the magic even after her death. As Blue Note strikes to kill Kana once more, Gildart's arrives just in time to stop them, much to everyone's relief and delight. After Gildart's arrival, he orders everyone to clear the area, as the sheer force of their initial clash alone sends Lucy and the others flying. Realizing that they'll only be in Gildart's way, Lucy and the others immediately leave. As the battles progress, Azuma manages to destroy the Great Tenro Tree, which protects and strengthens the fairy tale members, especially on their sacred grounds, and Lucy suddenly collapses, her energy drained along with the rest of her friends. Only after Urza defeats Azuma does Lucy begin to feel her magic returning to her. Later on, Team Natsu heads back to their camp and finds their comrades injured, but another one of the seven kin, Rusty Rose, defeated as well. The members who are left capable to fight still form an attack and defense team for their final battle against Hades. As they observe the rainfall, Natsu eventually gets up, ready to face Hades, and tells Happy and Lucy to come with him. Lucy thinks that she'll be on the defensive instead, but Freed and Brixlow say to leave it to them. Wendy and the Exceeds agree to take offense as well, and the group sets out. Before Lucy leaves, Lasana tells her to stay close to Natsu, for he becomes more powerful when he has friends near him. On the way to the final battle, Urza and Grey join them as well, and they stare down Hades on top of his airship. Hades tells the group he'll be waiting inside for their battle. Before going in, Natsu tells Carla, Panther, Lily, and Happy to go through the airship and make sure it won't take off during their battle. Grey then creates a flight of stairs, and they all climb into the battleship, as Lucy tells everyone to go all out right away. Natsu, Grey, and Urza employ a powerful combination right off the bat, followed by Lucy summoning Taurus, who slams down with his axe, making Hades stumble. Wendy then casts supportive spells on everyone. Lucy summons Scorpio, and together with Wendy performs a unison raid. Despite their efforts, however, Hades emerges unharmed. He asks if they're done warming up, and yells, Katsu! Wendy suddenly disappears with only her clothes left behind. Wendy then appears inside Orologium unscathed. The spirit tells everyone he was in automatic danger response mode. He explains that he detected a powerful spell was about to be used and saved Wendy's body in the nick of time. Orologium sends Wendy back down with new clothes, and everyone prepares to attack once more. Hades once again overwhelms everybody with his magic. He eventually tells the younger mage about his history as the second master of Fairy Tale, and how Makarov has made bad changes to the guild. Natsu defends the third master, which angers Hades greatly. Hades prepares to finish Natsu off, as Lucy yells for him to stop. Just before the spell is released, Laxus Dreyar appears and forcefully rams his forehead against Hades. Lucy watches as Laxus battles Hades on mostly even terms until Laxus is hit by one of Hades' explosion attacks. As Hades uses another powerful attack to finish Laxus, Natsu is given Laxus' lightning, which allows him to power up significantly and apparently be even able to defeat Hades. The Grimoire Heart Master, however, recovers from Natsu's attacks unaffected. He then unleashes his demon's eye by removing his eye patch, which he says exhausts his magic power. Natsu and the team helplessly watch as Hades moves to finish them off. Despite the seemingly inevitable situation, the fairy tale mages resolve to not give up, even as they're presently drained of magic power. They rush to attack Hades, and he wonders what they can possibly do with such meager amounts of power, as he orders for his demons to dance. Natsu accidentally trips while running, but Lucy and Wendy immediately grab him and haul him forward. Grey and Urza then kick Natsu, propelling him further and allowing him to close in on Hades. A big explosion then occurs on Hades' ship. Hades realizes his heart was destroyed by Happy and Carla. With this, his power dwindles significantly and is defeated by Natsu, Urza, and Grey. The battle ends and the Exceeds finally meet up with Team Natsu while being chased by the other Grimoire Heart members. Lucy and the others, unable to fight and completely drained of energy, are rescued by the rest of the Fairy Tale members. As the war finally comes to a close, Lucy rests at Tenro Island camp with her fellow fairy tale members. The peace is short-lived, however, as Acnologia, the infamous black dragon, lands on Tenro Island and starts wreaking havoc. All of the fairy tale members start moving towards the ship as the dragon goes on its rampage. Makarov then enters full giant mode and grabs Acnologia, holding it off from attacking the guild members. 
Everyone wishes to help Makarov, but he shouts at them to leave and to not disobey his final order. When Makarov is overwhelmed by Acnologia, all of them return and go all out against the dragon. As Acnologia, having shrugged off all of the combined attacks from his assailants, flies high up into the sky and readies to fire a breath attack against Tenro Island, the guild members join their hands in a circle. While promising that they'll return home to Fairy Tail, they're struck by Acnologia's blast, which completely annihilates Tenro Island, leaving nothing behind. X791 Arc Lucy, along with the rest of the members trapped in Tenro Island, return to the Fairy Tale Guild after being found by Biska, Alzac, Jet, Droy, Max, Warren, and the Trimans from Blue Pegasus. She watches as Mavis Vermilion reveals that she was the one who saved them before disappearing again. Lucy, along with the other returning members, are welcomed back by Romeo. After enjoying a long party after their return, Lucy returns to her apartment, where she's met by the apartment's owner, who, while glad that she's alive, tells Lucy that after having been missing for seven years, she owes 5,880,000 jewels. Lucy realizes the effects the seven years are going to have on her new life. She realizes her father must have been worried and goes to visit him at the Love and Lucky Guild along with Natsu and Happy. However, she's told by a member that her father died over a month ago, which greatly shocks her. A distraught Lucy, along with Happy and Natsu, is later seen walking on the road home. Here, the group encounters two girls complaining about their fathers and wishing they were dead. This prompts Natsu to yell at the girls. Lucy tells him to stop and apologizes for making them worry about her. When Happy asks if she's alright, Lucy replies that she is, except she was caught off guard because it was her dad. She looks back at her time with her father and how she didn't like him, adding the phantom incident to the list. Nonetheless, she reminisces on the time she went to save her father back in Akalifa and how much her relationship has changed since then. She questions why, despite the great sadness and loneliness she feels, she can't bring herself to cry and wonders if she really hates her father after all. Natsu assures her that this isn't the case, saying that tears have nothing to do with how a person truly feels. Later, as Lucy sulks by a park, her landlady arrives and silently drags her away, much to Lucy's dismay. She finds herself thrown into her own room, and the landlady shuts the door and stands behind it. Lucy is surprised to find it perfectly clean, to which the landlady replies that she cleaned it every week, though some of her clothes went bad and she took an outfit for herself. She directs Lucy to her table, where she sees several presents from her father, wishing her a happy birthday, and the fact that he remembered greatly shocks Lucy. The landlady also tells Lucy that another one came today, along with a letter from her father, stating that she is his and Layla Hartfilia's pride and that they always loved her. Crying, she says that she loved him too, and her landlady moves to leave to give Lucy the privacy she deserves. Natsu and Happy arrive with a job and had planned to take Lucy along with them. However, they're shocked when the landlady informs them that the letter that came for Lucy also came with seven years worth of rent. As they run off to do the job, now apparently the only ones without food or money, they tell Lucy that they'll buy her some food. As they say this, she thinks to herself that despite the seven years that have passed without them, they'll be living in this world regardless, so she tells Happy and Natsu that she's coming along as well. Grand Magic Games Arc Lucy, along with several other fairy tale members, head to the beach to train for the Grand Magic Games. On their first day, however, they play around instead and decide to relax as it's only the beginning. Later that day, Lucy summons Capricorn and asks for his guidance on overcoming her primary weakness, her lack of magic power, especially during crucial moments. He proceeds to tell her that she must feel the earth, the wind, the air with her skin, and must synchronize her breath with nature. Oh, is that all? Doing as she's told, Lucy begins to emit magic power to the point where it's completely visible, but then gets exhausted and falls back. She then starts talking about the one magic and how her mother had told her it's what people call love. Later that evening, Lucy and the girls take a bath in a hot spring, and the boys attempt to peep on them. As she glances heavenward and admires the stars, she decides that she'll put more effort into improving herself for fairy tale. On the second day of training, Virgo, having opened her own gate, appears and tells her that the celestial spirit world needs her help. The spirit teleports everyone, minus Jet and Droy, to the celestial spirit world. Surprisingly, instead of the danger that Virgo speaks of, Lucy and her gang are welcomed with a party held in their honor. She reunites with her celestial spirits and the team parties for the entire day. After the celebration, Virgo whisks them back to the human world. Natsu comments that if one year in the spirit world equates to a mere day in the human world, the astral plane would undoubtedly make good training grounds. Virgo shocks them, however, when she explains that it's actually the other way around, and that one day in the spirit world is actually three months in Lucy's world, thereby leaving Fairy Tail with only five more days to train until the games. As Fairy Tail worries over making it in time, a messenger bird perches atop Urza's head, and a single letter invites them to go to the suspension bridge deep in the West Woods. 
There, Lucy and the other members come upon the remains of a tattered bridge that suddenly fixes itself as they arrive. Taking it as a threat and a challenge, they venture further. As they cross the bridge, they're surprised to meet up with Jalal, Altir, and Meridi. The three, having established their own independent guild, Crime Sorcier, explain about a malevolent force that they've been feeling in the games for years now. They say that because of the nature of their guild, none of them are allowed to participate and investigate upon it further. In turn, they ask for the assistance of Fairy Tale on the matter. Altir assures them that they'll help Fairy Tale to the extent of their abilities. She says that with her improved time arc, she can extract and unleash the hidden potentials of mages. Lucy and the gang immediately take her up on her offer, as such processes will have powered them up even more than any other training they could have underwent. However, Altir warns that the process will be extremely unpleasant and tormenting. Lucy watches in horror as Natsu writhes around on the floor in pain when Altir begins the process. Later that evening, she, along with the rest of the fairy tale members, suffer the same fate and moan in pain as the procedure continues. A few days later, Lucy and the rest of Team Natsu arrive at Crocus, the capital of Fiori where the Grand Magic Games will take place. While still extremely exhausted over the extraction proceedings, Lucy claims that she feels her magic power has increased significantly. Meanwhile, Makarov and some guild members meet with them, the Master reminding them of their participation in the tournament whilst Levy briefs them on the rules. Later on, Lucy meets up with Natsu and Happy, who left earlier to explore the city. As they tour around, Natsu overhears that a fight has broken out close by. Following the noise of the onlookers, they see some mages on the ground defeated by the twin dragons of Sabretooth, who make fun of Natsu because he, despite being a dragon slayer, failed to defeat Acnologia, the Black Dragon. Lucy tells him that they're only saying that because they haven't met the dragon themselves, but is surprised when they reveal that they actually killed the dragons that taught them dragon slayer magic. Lucy, Natsu, Grey, and Happy arrive at their quarters just in time for the preliminary round, which will reduce the amount of teams from 113 down to 8. The task consists of navigating through Sky Labyrinth in order to reach Domus Flau. With the absence of Wendy, Elfman, who just came back from his training with Lasana, volunteers to fill in. The team runs into Twilight Ogre, and after taking their map, the team gets the idea of taking other guilds' maps to navigate through the maze. Once they do, Team Fairy Tale is surprised to find that they barely managed to get 8th place. The following day, Lucy and the rest of her team prepare for the opening ceremony of the Grand Magic Games, and the Celestial Spirit Mage comments on the large number of people that have turned up to watch. As the group discusses their team outfits, they're reminded of Wendy, who was discovered the previous night by Lisana and Happy collapsed on the ground. Remembering Wendy's tears when she realized she would no longer be able to participate, and vowing to discover the people responsible for her condition, Lucy and her team step out onto the Domus Flau to meet their competition. Walking out proud and determined, Lucy and her group is shocked when the crowd begins to boo them. Lucy becomes embarrassed until she spots the rest of her fairy tale comrades in the stands, screaming their praise out over the rest of the crowd. Lucy is also shocked when Mavis also turns out to be present. As the next four placing teams are introduced, Lucy comments on some of the people chosen to participate. In particular, a member from Blue Pegasus dressed entirely in a blue bunny suit. The teams then begin to talk to each other, and Lucy is quickly targeted by Ren from Blue Pegasus, who states that he'll take her. When the guild Raventail is brought out, Lucy expresses her shock that a dark guild could ever be able to participate, later becoming even more angered when it's revealed that it was Raventail responsible for hurting Wendy. As the team that came in second in the preliminaries is introduced, both Lucy and her team are shocked to see Gajiel, Loxus, Juvia, Mira Jane, and apparently Mystigan walk out as Fairy Tail's B team. Lucy commenting in particular on Laxus's participation. When told that every guild had the option of entering two teams for this year's games, Lucy calls out to the Master, asking why they were never told, though she also realizes that this new rule is the reason so many teams were competing in the first place. After Sabretooth's entrance, Chapati Lola moves to explain the procedure the games will take in X791, and Lucy comments on some of the rules as she hears them. With the rules explained, Chapati announces that the first event, Hidden, will begin, and asks each team to submit their player. Having only the title to go off of, Lucy and Urza comment that the event might involve stealth, so being small will be an advantage, which leads to both of them momentarily wishing Wendy was present. However, Grey soon steps forward to compete for their team. Cheering on Grey and wishing him the best, Lucy is left speechless upon seeing an entire city transformed into the arena for the event. Watching Grey participate, Lucy expresses her discomfort when, despite the nature of the event, Grey is repeatedly attacked by Null Pudding of Raventail, taking note that they only seem interested in attacking Fairy Tail, even neglecting others that have exposed themselves. Once the game is over and the battle portions are about to begin, Lucy is selected to battle Flare Corona of Raventail in the first fight of the day. Vowing to win for Wendy and Grey, Lucy begins her battle with Flare, demonstrating her new ability to summon multiple spirits at once and to combine their attacks. As the battle continues, Lucy begins to use her fleuve d'étoile against Flair's whip-like hair. 
However, Flair plays dirty, aiming to attack Asuka in the crowd, distracting Lucy, who becomes open to attacks. With Asuka as a hostage, Lucy is restrained from fighting back and gets beaten up by Flair. Luckily, Natsu is able to hear Lucy's cry for Asuka, find Flair's hair, and destroy it, giving Lucy the chance to fight back. She summons Gemini and prepares to cast Uranometrio with them. However, the magic is dispelled by Raventail member Obra before it can hit, and Lucy collapses from exhaustion, giving Flair the win. Lucy is extremely devastated over her loss, to the point of failing to watch the succeeding matches as she cries inside the shower. As the first day of the game concludes, Levy addresses a letter to Lucy, claiming something worse than Fairy Tail's loss is brewing about already. The next day, Lucy and Gray fail to show up in the bar where Fairy Tail is gathered, and Juvia's imagination goes haywire as she assumes Lucy must have kept Gray somewhere and even confessed her love to him. As Juvia's imagination makes a turn for the worse, Lucy and Gray show up, and Levy worries over her well being. Lucy jabs a thumbs up towards Levy and claims that she's actually more pumped than ever. As is the fairy tale spirit, Lucy and the rest of the gang all cheer for their goal of becoming the number one guild in Fiori once again. In the middle of the guild's merrymaking, Bacchus challenges and wins over Kana in a drinking match. Urza recognizes him, and Lucy visibly shivers as she comments that his strength is on par with hers. Later on, Carla has another vague premonition and foresees Lucy singing something as Mercurius collapses around her. On the second day of the games, Lucy along with the members of Fairy Tale present in the event is touched over Natsu's strong affections for his guild as he strives to finish the challenge despite being extremely weak to transportation. After the event, she visits the infirmary and inquires about his and Wendy's health. Carla refuses to tell Lucy anything about her premonition, and the latter heads off, saying that the rest of the guild is waiting for her. She then watches the battles that unfold and catches the eye of a beat-up flare. Lucy turns away as she sees Flair being threatened. Further into the battle portion, Lucy is impressed by Raventail's strength, even when they don't resort to cheating. As it's announced that Elfman will be the next contender, and Lucy watches in horror as Bacchus overwhelms the takeover mage, whilst Urza explains the fundamentals of the former's fighting styles. Later on, when Elfman comes out triumphant, Lucy and the rest of Fairy Tale cheer for his win. When they visit him in the infirmary afterwards to congratulate him, the incident about Wendy's near kidnapping is revealed, and Carla ponders upon Raventail's apparent peculiar method of capturing their target. She explains that among the bandits who were supposedly supposed to kidnap Lucy, but who mistakenly took Wendy instead, she finds it suspicious that the Raventail mage capable of reducing his opponent's magic power into nothing was not among the perpetrators. Urza then says that for the sake of vigilance, no one should be left alone at any given time. Back in the arena, Fairy Tail observes the next fight, in which Mira Jane faces off against Blue Pegasus's Jenny Real Light. Lucy watches in shock as the supposed battle portion becomes a swimsuit modeling contest instead, and she comments on how Jenny had been the number one mage you'd like to be your girlfriend seven years ago. As the competition reaches its climax, Lucy sees Mira Jane transform in accordance to the battle theme, and Urza says that it's Satan's soul, Citri, Mira Jane's strongest takeover yet. Afterwards, Fairy Tail focuses on the last battle between Team Sabretooth's Yukino Agria and Team Mermaid Heels Kagura Mikazuchi. Lucy is extremely astonished to discover that the Sabretooth representative not only employs celestial spirit magic just like her, but also possesses the last two golden keys. She's even more surprised when Yukino reveals that she has the 13th key of the Zodiac as well. With the conclusion of the day's events and Sabretooth's loss, Lucy and her friends go out for dinner. As they walk back to their lodgings, Sans Grey and Elsa, Lucy complains to Wendy about sharing the room with their teammates. They then spot someone standing outside the Honeybone, and upon closer inspection, they realize it to be Yukino. They invite her inside, and Yukino, having said she has business with Lucy, attempts to give the latter the keys of Pisces and Libra. Yukino explains that since she's no longer going to be in the tournament, she's resolved to give her keys to a stronger celestial spirit mage than herself, and that with all 12 golden zodiac keys in her possession, Lucy will be capable of opening the gate to changing the world. Despite all of Yukino's arguments, Lucy still politely declines after giving her own reasons. Later on, as Lucy bathes, Wendy and Carla wonder why she didn't accept the keys, and Lucy admits that in the past she might have, but since celestial spirit magic is about trust, she didn't want to be the one to break the bonds between spirit and mage. Lucy then asks where Natsu and Happy have gone, and Wendy and Carla say that Natsu went chasing after Yukino. As the third day of the Grand Magic Games begins and the day's event is announced to be Pandemonium, Lucy cheers for Urza, telling her to try her best. While Mato is explaining things about the event, Lucy along with Wendy becomes shocked after seeing the monsters that the representatives will have to fight. After Urza battles all 100 monsters and successfully defeats them, Lucy becomes happy and hugs Wendy. Lucy and her teammates run towards Urza and praise her, with Urza replying that they haven't won yet. When MPF begins, Lucy asks Urza about Obra's strange behavior and telling the other mage that she should be in the sickbay. 
When the third battle is announced, Lucy watches as Alexei attacks Laxus continuously and is shocked by the fact that Laxus can't lift a finger, not knowing that the fight is just an illusion. After Laxus defeats Team Raventail and the illusion magic is dispelled, Lucy sees an unconscious flare and says that Laxus didn't have to hurt her that badly, with Urza saying that Lucy is a really good person. During Wendy and Sherry's sky battle, Lucy constantly cheers for Wendy and is surprised when her opponent is completely uninjured after getting hit by Wendy's attack. The grueling fight between Wendy and Sherry continues with Lucy, seemingly unworried about her comrade as Sherry's recovery is a clear hindrance for Wendy to win the fight. As the battle continues, Lucy still seems to be tensed about her teammate's position in the fight. Finally, as the battle ends with the result being a draw, Lucy is happy about the outcome of the match and is relieved that Wendy is safe. After the third day's events and battles, the fairy tale mages celebrate their victories by throwing a party and having fun. Lucy compliments Urza's amazing recovery ability and continues to celebrate with the others. On the fourth day of the Grand Magic Games, Lucy decides to participate for Team Fairy Tale A to make up for her poor performance in the first day's battle. The event she enters is one called Naval Battle, where the participants are required to remove one another from a floating sphere by whatever means necessary. Lucy and her team are quite confident in Lucy, as they know she'll be able to summon Aquarius within the water, something Lucy does as soon as the event begins. Aquarius uses her water to try to push the other contestants out, however Juvia quickly counters the Celestial Spirit with her own magic, and Aquarius gives up, telling Lucy that she has a date and returning to the Celestial Spirit world. With Aquarius gone, Lucy simply tries to remain in the ring as the others attack and manages to do so by getting Virgo and Ares to help her. Eventually, only she and Sabretooth's Minerva remain, and Minerva begins to use her magic to attack Lucy. Lucy is shocked that Minerva's magic is hot within the water, but also because the attacks are hurting her so much. Despite this, she vows to fight back and attempts to use her keys, only to find that Minerva has taken them from her. Left defenseless, Lucy can only endure Minerva's attacks as the latter refuses to let her fall from the sphere, constantly bringing her back again and again purely for her own entertainment as she attacks. Even so, Lucy refuses to give in, stating that she'll endure all of the attacks for her guild so that she can look at them in the eye when the event is over. Minerva doesn't like this at all and unleashes a very powerful attack on Lucy, knocking her out. Before she can do more though, the judges hastily declare the event over, and Lucy hangs limp, held by her throat, outside the water sphere in an almost trophy-like manner as Minerva smiles over her victory. Minerva then releases her grip on Lucy, leaving her to fall until Natsu and Grey catch her. Grey asks her if she's okay, and Wendy and Sherry volunteer to help her. She's later placed in the infirmary, and Fairy Tale Team A and B nervously watch over her. When she wakes up, she asks for forgiveness for losing, but Grey and Urza try to comfort her. She's worried about her keys until Happy gives them to her, and she hugs them and falls asleep. She wishes good luck to the new Team Fairy Tale, the A and B team being forced to merge to even out the number of teams. And before Natsu and Gajiel's tag fight with Sting and Rogue, she quietly whispers Natsu's name. As the fight occurs, Lucy watches from her bed, and upon seeing Natsu and Gajiel seemingly fall, she becomes upset and begins to cry. However, when the two stand up and keep fighting, her tears disappear and she smiles at Wendy, who's sitting beside her. After Natsu sends Gajiel away from the battle, Lucy continues to watch the match as Natsu takes on the twin dragons of Sabretooth alone. Upon the activation of their unison raid, Sting and Rogue attack Natsu, who counters with his Crimson Lotus exploding flame blade. The force of the collision causes an explosion in the Domus Flau, and a worrying Lucy watches on in anxiety as it's soon revealed that Natsu is the victor. Seeing Natsu come out on top, Lucy grabs and hugs Wendy with joy. She's shortly visited by Team Shadow Gear, Levy bursting through the door and the two girls displaying their happiness over the results, smiling at the thought that Fairy Tail actually has a chance at winning the games. Later, Lucy follows Gajiel as he takes the other Dragon Slayers and their Exceeds underneath the Domus Flau. After arriving, she surveys the area in shock, as the entire catacomb beneath the stadium is filled with dragon skeletons. While walking around, Wendy mentions the word Milky Way, and after hearing this, Lucy proceeds to ask about it and finds the answer surprising. Lucy watches as Wendy begins drawing the magic circle needed to invoke the Milky Way spell and sees the area light up as the spell begins to work. The bones on the ground begin moving, much to Lucy's apprehension, and a large demon is summoned before her eyes. The dragon introduces himself as Zirconis and begins joking about eating Wendy, causing Lucy to question his mind. Lucy listens as Zirconis explains the history of the dragons and how Dragon Slayer magic came about, surprising her. As it's revealed that Acnologia, the Dragon King, was once a human, Lucy is shocked as she hears bathing in dragon blood turned him into a dragon. When Zirconis disappears, Lucy makes a comment about the feeling of entering Nirvana. The arrival of Yukino alongside Arcadio surprises Lucy as she hears the latter say they can defeat both Zeref and Acnologia. 
Upon seeing Arcadios and Yukino, Lucy notes that the latter has been a mage of Sabretooth, wondering why she came with the former, and as they leave, listens as Yukino claims that they have a plan to defeat Zaref and Acnologia. Lucy soon heads to Mercurius and is taken by Arcadios to see the machine designated for the Eclipse Project, amazed by its size. Learning the requirements for the plan from Yukino and how it'll help them defeat Zaref, Lucy notes the date of the project initiation. However, the Fiori army immediately shows up and orders the arrest of Lucy, Yukino, and Arcadios, claiming that the Eclipse plan is dangerous and must be stopped. As Lucy is arrested, she angrily argues against it, and Natsu attempts to save her, but has his magic power drained, and like the rest of the fairy tale mages, he's blocked and ejected from the castle. In the lower levels of Mercurius, Lucy and Yukino sit together in a prison cell. As Yukino blames herself for the situation, Lucy tells her not to do so and says that they need to escape together. Lucy listens to Yukino's story about how her sister Serrano used to stand up for her and how she was taken away by Zaref followers. Yukino explains that she wants to use the Eclipse plan to stop Zaref and thereby bring her sister back. Listening to this, Lucy wonders about whether the effects that'll result from changing the past will really be beneficial or not, as if it really is possible to change the past. Locked in her cell, Lucy lays on her bed, soon astonished by the sound of her name. She looks up to find Mira Jane, Natsu, and Wendy standing outside her cell. Natsu then breaks down the door, allowing Lucy and Yukino to escape. Standing outside the cell, Lucy thanks everyone, but soon realizes she no longer possesses her keys and that she has to find them. Simultaneously, the floor collapses beneath the group, which results in them landing in an underground cavern. Looking around, she hears a strange voice, informing them that they're in the Abyss Palace, the last freedom allowed to criminals. After this, Lucy along with the others look around for a while, searching for a way out. As they continue to search, Lucy asks Natsu about the tournament, to which Happy replies that Natsu couldn't keep himself still and was only thinking about rescuing her, which causes Lucy to blush as she tells them that they're flattering her. Seconds later, Mira Jane, holding Yukino, asks Lucy if Yukino's resemblance to Lasana is uncanny, prompting Lucy to notice the similarities. Lucy turns her head around when she hears Carla saying that she found a passage and begins to walk through the tight space as she complains about how narrow it is. When they reach the other side, they see Arcadio severely wounded on the ground, telling them to run. Soon after this, Lucy and the others are attacked by a giant shadowy figure staring down at them before they're able to make a move. After the assault, Lucy looks on the ground and sees the floor evaporating, and she comments that it must be acid. Soon after, more of the mysterious people appear, calling themselves the Garo Knights, the most powerful executioners of Fiori. Arcadius warns the mages that the magic of the knights is specifically made for killing, and as they prepare to fight, Lucy and Yukino both remain idle due to both of them being unable to utilize their magic power without their keys. Once the battle begins, Lucy and Yukino are targeted by the Cosmos plant technique, but are saved by Panther Lily. Once Kamika and Cosmos commence their assault, Lucy and the others are almost consumed by the spell until Natsu, Panther Lily, and Mira Jane manage to destroy the technique, which in turn creates an explosion that separates everyone. In the aftermath, Lucy ends up with Yukino, Happy, Arcadios, and Carla, none of whom can fight as they're confronted by Yosuke, who uses his magic to levitate Happy. Yosuke makes the first move with his terrain effect, a lava zone, which causes the ground around the girls to break down into pieces, exposing the lava underneath. As the area crumbles, Lucy and Yukino grab onto a ledge to keep from falling into the lava, but find themselves struggling to hold on as the heat harms them. Arcadios talks to the girls about Eclipse, something that Lucy tries to put off until the former crosses the lava, much to her surprise to help them. Telling Lucy that she and Yukino are the key to Eclipse, Arcadios helps the girls get to safety, but seemingly at the cost of his life. Though Arcadios seemingly disappears into the lava, he's brought out by Orologium, who tells Lucy that he came on his own will in response to her asking. Loki appears as well and returns Lucy's keys to her, also returning Yukino's keys. With the twelve Zodiac keys together, Lucy prepares to fight alongside Loki and Yukino. Using Aquarius' power, Lucy and the group manage to defeat Yosuke, knocking the knight away and reuniting with the rest of the team as a result. As everyone is back together, Lucy takes a look at the defeated knights and subsequently looks on in caution as Natsu threatens the knights with execution unless they reveal the exit to them. After defeating the knights, Lucy and the others begin searching for an exit from Abyss Palace. While walking around, the group begins discussing the jade necklace Arcadios carries around his neck, reaching the conclusion that the necklace is the sole reason for Arcadios' survival. Soon, Lucy reveals that Arcadios told her and Yukino to meet the princess once they got out. The group soon reaches a door. Lucy and the others are shocked when it opens by itself and a hooded figure stands in the doorway. The hooded figure removes her hood and reveals her face, which turns out to be identical to Lucy's. Lucy is visibly shocked by the revelation and wonders what the reason behind this is. As Lucy looks at the identical version of herself, the woman reveals that she's from the future and begins to give the group a warning. But before she finishes, she suddenly faints, which gives Lucy an eerie feeling and causes her to wonder why she was the one to come from the future. 
While trying to make their escape, the team gets lost in the castle and is forced to decide what to do next. As Lucy looks at her future counterpart, she's told by Loki that even if there are two of her, he can love them both, for which Carla tells him to understand the situation, please? Suddenly, the Lucy of the future wakes up in front of her and begins recalling her memory, stating that according to it, they get captured again after escaping Abyss Palace due to coming across Eclipse and not being able to use magic. Lucy then hears her future counterpart state that she came back in time to prevent the worst possible future. Lucy becomes worried as her future self reveals that a herd of dragons will attack the country. As Natsu gets ready for the attack, Lucy asks him if he really wants to battle them, and Happy agrees, saying that it's impossible. When her future self thinks that the rest will doubt her premonition, Natsu says that it's impossible, and Lucy says that her future self needs to be less miserable. The other Lucy tells them to meet Jalal, who should be thinking of a strategy, and the others by an underground passage. Lucy then smiles at Natsu as he thanks the future Lucy for the information she provided them with. Led by her future self, Lucy and the others pace through the underground passageway, which he had explored beforehand. Suddenly, the royal army finds them and rushes to capture them. As the group realizes that Arcadios and Yukino have vanished, Lucy wonders why they went off on their own. Mira Jane heads back to find where Yukino went, but Lucy tells her that they have to stay together, but Mira Jane pays no heed. As Natsu and Loki fight the royal army soldiers, Lucy worries about Yukino. Lucy battles alongside the others using her whip to attack the soldiers, who summon an anti-magic unit to defeat them. Standing back to back with her future counterpart, Lucy wonders how many army members they'll have to face with her future counterpart, saying that they shouldn't have taken the route that they did. During the battle, the Garu Knights make their return and claim that the Sinners won't be allowed to leave the castle. Lucy and the other fairy tale mages continue their fight against the Fiori soldiers, when suddenly her opponents are engulfed in the shadows. When the mages feel a presence approaching them, Lucy tells her friends to stay alert. Soon, a man that identifies himself as Rogue appears in front of her group. Startled, Lucy and her group question the Sabertooth Man, with him revealing that he came back to activate the Eclipse Gate, something which he explains can be used as a mass weapon to destroy the incoming dragons. Happy to hear that they can save the future, the group is then surprised when Rogue reveals that merely using the Eclipse Gate isn't enough, as in his time, somebody intervened in the process, closing the gate and dooming them all. Lucy and her group asks who this person is, wondering if they can find and talk to them. Lucy then becoming shocked when Rogue reveals that it was her who got in the way more so that his precise reason for traveling through time is to kill her and stop her intervention. Having said this, Rogue attacks her. However, before Rogue's spell can hit her, Lucy's future counterpart leaps in front of her, taking the blow herself. Stunned, Lucy grabs her future self as she falls, beginning to cry when she sees her grave wound. As she holds her, future Lucy desperately tries to deny Rogue's words, stating that she would never interfere and bring Fiori's destruction, with Lucy saying she believes her, then asking why she tried to take the blow for her. Future Lucy replies that if her past self were to die, she would too, and by taking the hit, one of them could at least survive. Reaching out, the Lucy of the future asks to see Lucy's fairy tale guildmark, and as she shows her, Lucy notices something very wrong with her future self's own right hand. Before she can question her about it, though, her future counterpart closes her eyes, silently drifting off as she asks them to save the future. Angry, Lucy turns and screams at Rogue, angrily stating that she will never tamper with the gates, though Rogue lividly shouts back that as long as she's alive, it's her destiny. As Natsu faces up against Rogue, he tells Lucy and the others to get away from there, prompting Lucy to begin protesting his decision before being dragged off by Loki, who informs her that they should probably leave this to him. Reluctantly, Lucy hurries down the hallway with the others, casting one last look at her friend before he's lost to sight. Moments later, Lucy and the others crouch behind a bush, watching Hisui and her officers prepare to open the Eclipse Gate. Mulling over future Rogue's words, Lucy is surprised along with all the others when Arcadio suddenly tells them to come on out from where they're hiding, as Darton and the Princess assure them that everything is fine, and the latter compliments them on their victory in the Grand Magic Games, Lucy asks why they're opening the gate now, as the dragons aren't even there yet. As Arcadios informs Hisui that Lucy and the other members of the rescue team are well aware of the current situation, he asks Lucy where her future counterpart is, only for Panther Lily to tell him that she was killed by the second visitor from the future. As Arcadios and Hisui express shock at this proclamation, Lucy informs them that the rogue of the future had claimed that the Eclipse Cannon couldn't be used because she had gotten in the way somehow in his timeline. Hisui then asks her if she does intend to get in the way of the cannon's use, with Lucy vehemently denying any such intention, only curious as to why they were opening the gate now when the dragons weren't even there yet. As the princess explains how the cannon needs time to prepare before she's able to fire, Lucy asks her if it's really possible for it to defeat all of the dragons. Hisui states that she isn't sure, but her father is preparing for the worst outcome should it come to pass. 
Moments later, Lucy and the others stand before the gate as it's opened, awestruck at the awesome sight. As Lucy remains awestruck at the sight of the Eclipse Gate opening, Wendy notes that the future doesn't seem as bleak and that future Lucy could rest in peace, but Lucy slowly approaches the gate and comes to a realization that they must keep the gate sealed. With a dazed look in her eyes, she states that she'll close the doors at once. Lucy continues to shout, stating that the doors must not fully open and they need to be closed immediately. She turns to Hisui, pleading to close the door at once, but Hisui denies her request and states that it's their only chance to defeat the dragons. Lucy retorts that it's not actually a weapon, but a portal that's connected to 400 years in the past. Just then, a tremor rises, and the people within the vicinity of the Eclipse Gate astonishingly look on as a dragon emerges from the gate. As the first dragon enters, it releases a roar and stomps the ground, unleashing a destructive wave and destroying everything within the wave's reach, leaving everyone disoriented. Subsequently, numerous dragons start to enter through the gate, with Hisui looking on in disbelief and shock. Lucy yells at her to snap out of it and inquires how to close the door, with Hisui pointing out a lever on a pedestal. Lucy bolts for the pedestal, but as another dragon passes through the gate, Lucy gets pushed back with Wendy embracing her fall. As Lucy attempts to close the gate, Wendy questions Lucy's realization to the situation, with Lucy revealing that her celestial spirit, Crux, was investigating the gate and had completed his analysis that states that the Eclipse is actually a mechanism that combines celestial magic with the magic from Zareph's book. The analysis also states Eclipse's original purpose, but due to the special set of circumstances, the magic contained within the gate had run rampant, which means it's impossible to control the door. As Lucy continues to pull the lever, disoriented as to why the door wouldn't close, a dragon stomps and emits enough force to propel Lucy away from the pedestal. Hisui in tears reflects upon the situation and how their world would be reduced to mere rubble, but Lucy rejects the thought and declares her will to continue on living, stating that she swore to protect the future. Despite her best attempts, Lucy is unable to close the Eclipse Gate, struggling a great deal as she tries. Suddenly, Yukino arrives and tells Lucy to take out her gold keys, stating that she'll use hers as well and combined they'll close the gate. As Yukino tosses her keys in the air, Lucy follows suit and the two girls hold hands, invoking a great deal of magic power as the Zodiac Gates open and the twelve gold key spirits arrive. Stating she's counting on them, Lucy sees the spirits forcefully close the gate, much to her relief. However, the relief is short-lived, as the rogue of the future blames her and Yukino for their actions. Wondering where Natsu is, Lucy hears the man state controlling 10,000 dragons would be tough, making her ask if recent events were his objective. Lucy watches as future rogue takes control of the dragons which arrived and orders them to eliminate all the mages. As this happens, Lucy sees the arrival of Zirconis, the dragon she and the group met in the graveyard. Hearing Natsu's voice telling everyone to work together and take down the dragons, Lucy joyously gazes towards the sky. However, Zirconis interrupts the group by openly pondering who he should eat first. After a while, the dragon just decides to eat all of them at once, and unleashes a breath attack, which Lucy narrowly manages to dodge. Rising, Lucy sees that the royal army guards behind her were hit, but rather than being injured, they've merely been stripped naked. As she stares on in shock at the sight, Zirconis reveals that his magic strips people of their dignity and aims his next huff at Lucy, who also loses her clothes. Screaming that she wants somebody to find her some clothes, Lucy is snatched up by the scaly claws of Zirconis, the dragon threatening to eat her. As she squirms and tries to get out of his grasp, Mira Jane and Wendy attack, causing an angry Zirconis to throw Lucy across Crocus. Flying through the air, Lucy crashes straight into Natsu as he battles future Rogue atop Mother Glare, sending them toppling off the dragon and landing them in a church bell. As the two move about trying to get Natsu off of Lucy's naked body, they cause the bell to teeter and fall from where it was perched, crashing to the ground. Telling Natsu not to look, Natsu hastily grabs Lucy's boobs to try to cover them from his eyes, which only prompts her to punch him. Much to her further embarrassment, Happy arrives with the keys teasing the two. As Natsu and his exceed friend talk about future Rogue and how strong Mother Glare is, Lucy points out that all of the dragons are strong and becomes upset thinking about how she could have almost been eaten. Natsu, however, suddenly smiles and grabbing her, gleefully states that she has helped him come up with a strategy to defeat the dragons. Summoning Virgo to bring her new clothes, Lucy dresses and emerges from her makeshift change room to find that Natsu and Happy have already flown off to begin their plan. Complaining about their hastiness, Lucy then smiles, happy that they can still be so positive despite the bleak scenario. Turning, she suddenly spots her journal lying on a crate nearby. Wondering what it's doing there, she picks it up and flips it open, only to realize that it belongs to her future counterpart. While the fairy tale mages try to hold back Zirconis, Lucy returns to the palace to show her future self's diary to her friends. According to it, if the Eclipse Gate is destroyed, the events chained to it would lead to future Lucy disappearing, so Lucy is led to believe that it'll have the same effect on future Rogue and the dragons. Along with Yukino, she uses her remaining magic power to destroy the gates using two of the keys, but to no avail. 
However, she refuses to give up and calls more spirits, one of which is Taurus. When Happy tells her to get away, Lucy ducks in time to avoid Mother Glare, who crushes down on the gates. Much to her delight, she sees Natsu over a defeated rogue and the remains of the Eclipse Gate. Shortly after that, she watches as the dragon's bodies start glowing. As they go back to their time, Lucy is delighted to see that they're gone. At that moment, the notebook of her future self that she's holding starts disappearing as well, and much to her surprise, tears begin running down her cheeks. Lucy then hugs Natsu from behind, and when he asks her if there's anything wrong, she just gives him her thanks. To celebrate their victory against the dragons, King Toma organizes a banquet for the mages at Mercurius. As she moves throughout the room tasting the available food, Lucy is approached by Hisui, who mentions that she was once a friend of her father's and also apologizes for the trouble that she caused. Lucy dismisses this with the fact that she had been in far deeper trouble, no thanks to Fairy Tale. Later, as she walks the room with Mira Jane and Yukino, Lucy watches as Sting approaches Yukino and asks her to rejoin Sabretooth, only for her to stand firmly by her own guild and demand that Yukino join them instead. Getting dragged into the brawl that soon follows, Lucy is only saved by the announcement that the king is arriving. However, as Natsu himself enters the room dressed in the king's own clothes, Lucy realizes that the day will simply just be one of chaos and smiles at the shenanigans everyone has caused. Sometime after the party is over, Lucy leaves Crocus along with the rest of Team Natsu, Wendy, and Carla, stating that she feels sad about leaving after all they went through. Upon returning to Magnolia Town, the fairy tale mages are greeted by the populace with a celebration for their victory in the games. Lucy is surprised to see the large number of people who turned out, with Urza noting that there are even people from outside Magnolia. Walking in front of the crowds, Lucy notices her landlady and the man from the boat cheering for her. Waving to them, Lucy is called out by her landlady, who tells her that she still has to pay rent. During the festivities, Lucy and the rest of the guild are shown their guild building by the mayor of Magnolia, who tells them that it's theirs, having been worked on by the townspeople. Sun Village Arc Sitting in the guild's new bathhouse, Lucy comments on how good she feels. As everyone begins talking about work and their new jobs, Lucy asks Levy if she didn't have a job with Jet and Droy, only to be told that they wanted to do a job by themselves. When she mentions that Natsu and Grey went on a job by themselves, Kana approaches Lily and asks about Natsu groping her breasts, revealing that Happy told her. Though she tries to explain, Kana is more interested in grabbing her breasts for herself, something which Lucy says tickles. Juvia mentions Urza as having gone on a job to get rare sweets, but when Lisana believes Urza is with them, Lucy turns to find a redhead rising from the bath who turns out to be Flair from Raventail. Kana's quick to rush her, but Lucy tackles her down, telling her Flair isn't such a bad person. Hearing that Raventail was disbanded and she has nowhere to go, Lucy asks if she should talk to the Master, only for Flair to say that she doesn't want to join Fairy Tale. When walking home, Lucy comments on the size of her bathtub compared to the guild's. Upon entering her apartment, Lucy is shocked to see Wendy, Urza, and Carla there. Offered some sweets from their job, Lucy asks about it but receives a mixed reply. As Carla asks about Natsu and Grey, Lucy states they aren't back yet, which is unusual given what their job was. Deciding to go look for them, the girls come across the monster they were meant to beat, a large beast completely unconscious. Finding Natsu and Grey are arguing, having been doing so for three days, Urza tries to stop them but is punched in the face, much to Lucy's shock before she later comes back angry. Back at the ranch, Lucy hears that Grey and Natsu had another joint request, which she understands is why they were together for the first time. Hearing that their request is from one of the four gods of Ishgar named Warad Sequin, Lucy is shocked. Out of concern for their recent bickering, Lucy decides to accompany Natsu and Grey for their meeting along with Urza, Happy, Wendy, and Carla. Journeying up to the mountains, Lucy takes in the fresh air but is soon put off by Natsu and Grey's constant bickering, telling them that they came because they were worried but the problem between them might be even worse than they thought. Lucy recalls that the Ten Wizard Saints are ten powerful mages appointed by the Council and confirmed of this by Urza, wonders why such a person would ask for people like Natsu and Grey. Suddenly, Wendy spots the house of their client and the group enters. As they do, Warren tells them to keep quiet around the plant, prompting Lucy to clamp her mouth shut but is then told it's a joke. Lucy questions his tree-like appearance and notes that he is a lively person. As Warad explains the quest, Lucy is surprised to hear about oddities such as a frozen flame and notes that Natsu is needed. Warad goes on to state that friends are needed by people to take care of one another, prompting Lucy and the rest to accept his request to save a frozen village. Getting in position, the team is momentarily pranked before sent flying on Warad's plant to their destination. Having reached the Village of the Sun, Lucy and the rest of Team Natsu dismount from Warad's tree, where she notices Natsu suffering from motion sickness, asking the Fire Dragon Slayer if he truly got sick riding a mere plant. The group then walks into the village, where Lucy notes that everything is truly frozen over. The group stumbles upon a frozen giant, causing Natsu to look around and point out all of the large things, among which is Lucy's breasts. After taking Natsu's observations into account, Lucy marvels at the frozen giants, however she stops upon noticing Grey break into a sweat and asks him if the situation reminds him of Deliora. 
Upon seeing Natsu and Grey fail to melt the ice, Lucy notes that the mission isn't going to be as simple as she thought. The team is then interrupted by a treasure hunting guild, Sylph Labyrinth. Lucy asks if, like their name suggests, they hunt treasures. Lucy is then shocked to see the treasure hunters' reactions upon being told that they've arrived to melt the ice encompassing the giants. Wendy explains that the Eternal Flame that the Sylph Labyrinth members are trying to steal is sacred to the Giants, prompting to state that if they took the Eternal Flame from the Giants, then the Treasure Hunters would be no more than common thieves. Lucy then shockingly witnesses one of the Sylph Labyrinth members remove a bottle of Moon Drip from his person and gives chase to the running Treasure Hunters, as with the Moon Drip they can save the villagers. As Lucy and co. proceed to chase the Sylph Labyrinth Treasure Hunters, Lucy inquires Wendy of Urza's whereabouts, to which Wendy says that Urza stayed behind in the village searching for clues. During the chase, the treasure hunters decide to stand their ground. After managing to evade an assault by Drake, Wendy alarmingly shoves Lucy out of the way from an undetected rifle shot by Hiroshi. After identifying the assailant's location, Lucy retaliates by summoning Sagittarius to reciprocate the projectile assaults but to no avail, as Hiroshi manages to dismantle the launched arrows. As the enemies cease their attacks and tell the fairy tale mages about their victory over the great hidden treasure hunter tournament of Fiori, Lucy unenthusiastically congratulates them. She then protects Grey, who secretly stole the Moon Drip from the Hunters by ordering Sagittarius to counter Drake's gunshot. Hiroshi and Rala attempt to retrieve the treasure as they concurrently ambush Grey. Grey, however, throws the bottle at Natsu, who then sends it to Lucy. As the bottle is being juggled between the mages, the Hunters continue their attacks until the bottle is tossed to Happy, who misses the catch and is scolded by the Hunters. Lucy notices the amount of space Moon Drip was able to rid of the ice, stating that it wouldn't be sufficient for the entire village. Seconds after realizing this, Natsu hears a voice, prompting Lucy and the others to chase after him, including the treasure hunters. Lucy and Wendy, having separated from Natsu and Grey, wander around the forest while Happy and Carla try to spot their teammates from the air. When Wendy reveals to Lucy that Rala and Hiroshi have followed them, imitating Happy and Carla, Lucy is shocked at first and then disappointed, questioning whether they really thought they could fool them with this kind of disguise. The two treasure hunters then proceed to reveal that they're after Lucy's rare golden keys and that they don't care about the giants, slashing one in order to prove a point in the process. This enrages Lucy and Wendy, who ask them to stop kindly at first, but then choose to fight when they see that their words won't reach them. The third treasure hunter, Drake, joins the fray and shoots at Lucy and Wendy's feet with his sniper, telling them that it's three against two. However, much to Lucy's surprise, Flair suddenly reappears, apparently saving Lucy and Wendy and saying that it's now three against three. Lucy wonders what Flair is doing in the Sun Village, to which Flair replies that she stalks Lucy everywhere she goes, much to the latter's embarrassment. However, Flair then proceeds to reveal that she just wanted to get back to her home, which was the Sun Village, leaving Lucy in disbelief. An enraged Flair proceeds to attack the Treasure Hunter trio, and Lucy decides to help her by summoning the Celestial Spirit Cancer, who helps Flair's hair grow back. Lucy, along with Wendy, reassures Flair that they want to help the Giants too, and that they'll all fight together. The Celestial Spirit Mage then summons Sagittarius and Virgo at the same time, ordering the latter to dig and attack Drake from behind, but her strategy fails as Virgo is unable to pierce the magic ice. As a result, Sagittarius is defeated by Lucy's opponent, and she, along with her two friends, are apparently left helpless and unable to fight. When the treasure hunters begin to belittle and humiliate the three mages, saying that women should know their place, Lucy replies that the treasure hunters can't possibly hope to deal with mages of their level. At that moment, Loki, who had been previously summoned by Lucy and snuck behind Drake, kicks the sniper out of the tree, and Lucy, along with Virgo, finishes him off using her signature Lucy Kick. At the same time, Wendy and Flair also finish their fight, and Lucy cries in joy that they managed to win. Soon after, Lucy sits down with Wendy and listens to Flair's story of how she lived in the village when she was young, but due to being different, she left and became who she is now. Lucy asks if such was why she joined Raventail. Flair confirms this, believing that what she did was normal and apologizes, but Lucy tells her that they don't mind. Asking if she came back to her home and found it in its current state, Lucy's answer is confirmed by Flair as the latter begins crying, which Lucy tells her to stop doing, saying that everyone is still alive. At this, Flair suggests that Eternal Flame can melt the ice and decides to take the girls to it. On the road to their destination, Lucy, Flair, and Wendy are hit by magic, which turns their bodies into children. As Lucy questions what happened, Flair tells her that her new body is cute, a feeling which Lucy reciprocates towards her. Later, changed back into their regular bodies, Lucy and the group come across Natsu, whom she questions about his running off earlier. However, Natsu ignores her and questions the presence of Flair, forcing Lucy to defend her, explaining that she was from the village and was guiding them to the Eternal Flame. Upon learning that they had already arrived at the flame, which was frozen over and more resembled a mountain, Lucy is shocked, having hoped that the flame would be able to melt the village. 
Suddenly, Gray runs towards the group, having been chased by a large, one-eyed bird. Natsu and Gray decide to get to work, with Gray attempting to unfreeze the flame while Natsu takes down the bird. The battle has Lucy momentarily worried while Natsu is pinned before he manages to deliver a direct hit. Meanwhile, Gray explains that he'll channel the ice through his body, and as he does so, Lucy notices the ice starting to disappear. However, once the ice disappears, the flame disappears as well, much to Lucy's surprise. Although the flame has apparently disappeared, Wendy insists that it's still alive but weak, and Lucy notices that there is indeed a small flame in the fire altar. She then shouts at Natsu to help the flame grow stronger. After Natsu manages to defeat the one-eyed creature and light the flame anew, the Guardian of the Flame is revealed to be Atlas Flame, much to Lucy's confusion. Seeing him, Lucy remembers him as one of the dragons who came from the Eclipse Gate. However, Wendy reveals that she called him using Milky Way, and that being frozen over jumbled his memories to an extent. As she hears his story about being frozen by a Demon Slayer mage, Lucy is surprised that such a magic exists. Seeing Flare on the ground begging for Atlas to save the village, Lucy looks upon her with sympathy as Atlas remembers who he is and uses his power to send a wave of heat to melt the ice around the village. As this happens, Lucy has Grey use his magic on her to keep her cool. Seeing the village saved, Lucy expresses her happiness and surprise that Atlas was able to do what he did considering his limited energy. With the giants saved, Lucy and the group take the chance to ask about the circumstance of their freezing, with Lucy recalling that it was apparently done by an Ice Devil Slayer who mistook Atlas Flame for a devil. As it's suggested that it was a mistake, Grey points out that they don't yet know the true motive of the Devil Slayer, recalling Doriate's warning which causes Urza to think of Tartaros, scaring Lucy. As the group decides to put the issue temporarily to rest, Lucy looks around and realizes that Flair is missing. Finding her behind a tree, Lucy tries getting her to speak to the giants, only to find that she's afraid of their reaction due to her having left the village without saying anything. Lucy attempts to convince her that they won't mind. Finally getting her to talk, Lucy watches with a smile as she's accepted back into the village, recalling it as the first time Flair ever smiled that way. As a result of everyone's happiness, the celebration continues throughout the night, enabling everyone to forget about the demons, Zaref, and Tartaros. After returning to Ward's house subsequent to the completion of the mission, Lucy and the group are told of a secret hot spring, which they take a trip to that night. As Ward shows excitement over how his comrades behave with one another, Lucy tells him it has nothing to do with him, only to be corrected as he reveals that he was one of the founders of Fairy Tale, much to everyone's surprise as Lucy also realizes why Makarov was adamant that Natsu and Grey not fail the mission. As Ward goes on to explain Mavis's views on camaraderie, Lucy thinks to herself about their meaning and depth. As the issue of Tartaros and the Book of Zareph comes up, Ward reveals rumors about said Dark Yield being demon worshippers and in possession of the book. Seeing Natsu get angry, Lucy watches as he unintentionally hits Urza and causes her to retaliate. Tartaros Arc after returning to the guild, Lucy and several others look through a book for information on Zareph and his demons, learning in the process that END is a demon unlike the others, making it his strongest and potentially in the hands of Tartaros. When Natsu suggests attacking said Dark Guild, Lucy immediately speaks out against it, noting the challenges that they would face and their lack of preparation. However, their conversation is suddenly interrupted by the arrival of Jet, who reveals something bad has happened. Lucy, along with the other fairy tale mages, is present when Porliuska diagnoses that Laxus, Freed, Brickslow, and Evergreen will survive despite lethal poisoning. Overtaken with grief, Lucy reveals her disgust toward Tartaros' actions, and Natsu decides that it's time for them to deal with the Dark Guild once and for all. Seeing that Natsu wants to attack Tartaros despite not knowing where they are, Lucy recalls that they only know their goal to eliminate the current and former council members. As they realize they don't know where any of the former council members are, Loki appears and states that he does, revealing how to Wendy and making Lucy realize that he learned through women. Using his information, Fairy Tail divides into teams to seek out and protect former council members. Before everyone departs, Lucy listens to Makarov's speech, in which he states that they'll crush Tartaros for the sake of their friends. Upon arriving at the house of the former council member Mikello, Lucy explains the situation only to have a hard time convincing him to let them protect him until his granddaughter Michaelia intervenes. As they ask why Tartaros would be after former council members, Mikello has a startling revelation, but before he can reveal anything, Lucy is pushed to the ground by Natsu just as an explosion occurs. Recovering from said explosion, Lucy is surprised to see that Natsu managed to eat most of it to minimize the harm. Suddenly, Tartaros' mage Jackal appears, with Lucy asking for his name. He expresses his surprise that he wasn't able to kill them as easily as he killed the others. Knowing that he's after Mikello, Lucy urges the old man to leave with them, thus allowing Natsu to fight. However, Jackal catches everyone by surprise by attacking the nearby buildings, shocking Lucy as she exclaims that the city has nothing to do with their business. As Natsu pounds into Jackal, Lucy watches the battle from afar, noting that Natsu is fighting incredibly hard, but noticing that Jackal was about to reveal something. 
As Jackal is seemingly defeated, Mikello begins to panic and demands that the fairy tale mages finish him off as he leaves to confirm the safety of the former council members. However, Jackal returns and reveals a bomb formula on Natsu's body, which explodes shortly after, taking Natsu out of the fight. Lucy protects Wendy during the explosion and is surprised to see the resulting attack took out Natsu. As Jackal expresses surprise that Natsu's body is still present, Lucy stares in anger as he threatens Mikelia in order to get information from Mikello. However, Mikello decides to flee in fear, with Jackal following him. Lucy and Wendy attempt to halt the demon's pursuit, but their Sky Dragon's Roar and Scorpio Sandbuster are proven to be ineffective against the demon's curse, a power that, according to Jackal, stands above magic. He then hits the girls with Exploding Spiral and quickly continues going after Mikello. Mikelia is upset that this is happening because of her grandfather, but Lucy states that they're fighting for their pride and tells Wendy to take care of Natsu while she follows Jackal. However, upon reaching the demon's location and preparing to summon a spirit, she's caught in a landmine curse set by Jackal and told not to move, lest it explode. As the crowd approaches, she urges them to get away, but her words aren't considered. However, Jackal notes the opportunity and takes hostages, and Lucy is soon given a choice, whether to save Mikello or an innocent pregnant woman. Though she protests having to make the choice, urging Jackal to fight fair, he simply prods her to make her decision or both captives will die. Much to Lucy's delight, Natsu suddenly appears, crashing into Jackal, releasing the bombs and the enchantment. Lucy then watches as Natsu knocks Mikello unconscious and later shows off his trick in dealing with Jackal's explosions. Witnessing their subsequent fight, Lucy becomes concerned when Natsu disappears in another one of Jackal's explosions, only to be relieved when he emerges unharmed. Teasing Natsu about destroying the town after Jackal is defeated, Lucy comments on the demon's strength due to Natsu's initial difficulty with him. Noticing Jackal's weak laughter, Lucy and the others become aware of the explosion marks appearing around the town and realize the demon's attempt to destroy them all. Despairing over the situation, Lucy is then shocked to see Happy fly away with Jackal's body, witnessing the small exceed consumed by the final explosion. She then sighs in relief upon seeing Happy return alive. After their encounter with Jackal, Lucy utilizes a communication locker mode that was found in town to report to Makarov that they've successfully protected Mikello and that Natsu has defeated a member of Tartaros, with the former acquiring serious wounds from the encounter. After learning of Face and its details, Lucy and the rest of the fairy tale members anxiously discuss their next course of action. Suddenly, Natsu gets up, causing Lucy to ask what's wrong, noting his urgency. However, Natsu doesn't answer her, and after asking Mikello where the ex counselors house is, he flies away with Happy as she calls out to him. Returning to the guild with no information on Natsu, Mira, or Urza's location, Lucy's attention turns to Happy, who dizzily comes in through a window. She listens to him as the ex seed reveals that the former chairman is a traitor affiliated with Tartaros and that Natsu and the others have been captured. Furthermore, Happy informs them that Tartaros' headquarters is a massive floating island that moves about. Hearing Happy claim that he left Natsu behind as tears fall from his eyes, Lucy approaches and hugs him, reminding him that he did his best trying to save everyone. Seconds later, Elfman appears at the gates of Fairy Tale. With Happy still in her arms, Lucy looks on in disbelief as Elfman shares the news of Lisana's capture and unsuccessfully rescuing Yuri. After Kana snaps at Elfman for not being able to handle the situation, Lucy and everyone else within the vicinity tenses up. Upon Levy's announcement of pinpointing Tartarosa's location, Lucy astonishingly turns to her. Hearing that their base is directly above them, Lucy remains bewildered until Levy explains that their base is currently above Magnolia. Subsequently, Lucy turns to Happy and, along with the rest of the guild, prepares for departure. However, Kana, having learned of a Lacrima bomb in her guild, turns Lucy and the rest of the guild into cards to protect them. With the cards taken by the Exceed into Tartaros' headquarters, Lucy and the rest of the guild members are then released by Kana so as to mount an all-out attack. Lucy summons Loki and stands to fight next to the Celestial Spirit, while concurrently pondering how to reach the castle located on Top Cube. Suddenly, Urza creates a sizable crater from within Cube, leading Lucy to eye the hole. As she follows her guildmates as they use the hole to infiltrate Cube, Lucy is called out by Urza, who tells her that Face has been unsealed and demands that she find a way to stop it from activating. Moving into the guild with Wendy, Happy, and Carla, Lucy soon finds Cube's control room, eyeing the computers and seeing that Face is in fact unsealed, as Urza said. As she reads that Face has to be manually activated on site, the computers suddenly light up, bringing up a countdown timer as the group realizes someone has just activated it. Planning to move out and head to the device to shut it down, Lucy and her friends turn to find Keys walking towards them, the demon threatening them to hell as he approaches. Lucy and Wendy, seeing that they have no time to spend fighting their opponent seriously, decide to distract Keys and make a run for it, just as Franmoth also joins the fray. Pulling out her keys, Lucy summons both Taurus and Ares, who use a combination spell to fill the room with a large cloud of pink wool, buying Lucy and Wendy enough time to fly away with Happy and Carla. 
However, as they speed down the hallways looking for a way out, Keyes suddenly appears before them once more. As the skeleton demon moves to cast the spell on them, he's attacked from behind by Grey, allowing Lucy and Wendy to continue, though as they round another corner, they're met by Franmolth, who shocks them by attacking with Ares wool. Caught up, Lucy screams for Wendy to fly on without her, and though Franmoth attempts to grab at the Sky Dragon Slayer, he's stopped by Natsu, who rushes to their aid. With Wendy free and going after Face, Lucy and Natsu prepare to face Franmoth, both shocked that they realize he's absorbed Taurus and Wendy with his curse, and can utilize their captured soul to morph his own body and attack. With Happy and Lucy watching on, Natsu struggles to properly land a blow on the demon, as Franmoth keeps pulling forward Ares' face and causing him to hesitate. However, after a successful punch to the demon's face, Franmoth becomes incredibly angry and states that he'll show them his most powerful soul. Lucy watches in horror as an ominous aura surrounds the demon. Though afraid, as Franmoth reveals that his strongest soul is that of Hades of Grimoire Heart, the fear is quick to subside as Franmoth looks rather odd after undergoing his transformation. Watching as Franmoth attacks Natsu, Lucy calls out as the fight rages on. Before long, Lucy is blown away by the power of Natsu's lightning flame dragon's roar, but is soon shocked to see that Franmoth was able to absorb the soul of his magic and listens as he claims that demons from the Books of Zeref are strong enough to confront an entire army alone. Shortly after, Orologium appears, revealing that only 9 minutes and 43 seconds remain before Face activates. Though Lucy fears Face's activation, affecting everyone's battle, she's reminded that Wendy and Carla are on the case. As Face begins to activate, Lucy begins to lose her balance. Franmoth explains what's happening and that there are barely three minutes left before it's complete, which causes Lucy to worry about Wendy. Expecting the magic to leave her body, Lucy is surprised to see their magic abilities prevail, prompting Happy to claim that Wendy and Carla were able to destroy Face. However, their joy is short-lived as Franmoth releases a barrage of attacks while announcing the magnitude of their deeds. As Lucy and Happy formulate a plan, Franmoth reminds them that he's in possession of Hades' soul, releasing a powerful spell that wrecks the vicinity. Laying on the ground after the blast, Lucy watches as the enemy grabs a hold of Natsu in an attempt to absorb his soul. Before Lucy can do anything, she's also pinned to the ground by Franmoth's power of absorption, along with Happy. The trio struggles, preventing Franmoth from obtaining their souls as Natsu tells them to think of something they care about. Lucy rapidly thinks of her friends and the celestial spirits. Thinking to herself that letting the demon have her spirits is unacceptable, she forcibly closes Taurus's gate. Seeing that this nearly causes Franmoth to enter the Celestial Spirit World along with Taurus before releasing him, Lucy repeats her action, forcing Franmoth to release Ares as well. Seeing the opportunity, Lucy reiterates her words, calling Natsu's name, scaring Franmoth into releasing him as well. Lucy then watches as Natsu ends the fight with his power. As floating orbs exit Franmoth's body, the three gaze and assume that all of the souls he held are now free. As they watch, one of the souls assumes the appearance of Hades and advises the three to tell Makarov to release the light before Tartaros achieves its real objective. After Hades disappears, Lucy and the others contemplate the meaning of these words. Realizing that Face must have been stopped by Wendy and Carla, Lucy joins Natsu in their search for Mirajane while Happy leaves to contact Makarov. As they walk through the passage, Lucy notes that Grey should be keeping one of the demons busy at the location they ran through earlier. At that moment, Warren contacts everyone through his telepathy, informing them that Mira Jane is safe. Lucy announces that Wendy and Carla stopped face, filling everyone with joy. After Happy informs Makarov of Hades' last words, the telepathy among Lucy and the others is hijacked by Mar Gear, who introduces himself and activates Allegria. The walls of Cube begin distorting, and Lucy finds herself to be sucked in, with her and Natsu unable to catch each other's hands. While the rest of the fairy tale mages get absorbed, Lucy manages to get out, wondering what happened. Looking through a window, Lucy is shocked upon hearing the screams of the citizens below as she witnesses the destruction of Cardia Cathedral, caused by the moving Plutogrim. Unable to bear the screams, Lucy crawls up into a fetal position. Suddenly, the voice of Mard resounds, informing everyone within the beast that a prize will be given to the one who takes the life of the only human who survived Allegria, leading Lucy to ponder the condition of her fellow guildmates. A stream of water enters the cave where Lucy stands, dragging her along with the pressure. Eventually, Lucy grabs a wooden board and rides the waves, easily overpowering Tartarus's henchmen as they all joyously restate Mard's claim. Lucy then summons Sagittarius, who makes quick work of the underlings surrounding his summoner. Lamy, however, appears, whose curse renders Sagittarius's arrows futile. Said dilemma leads Lucy to summon Virgo, who stays behind before confronting Lamy. Riding on the board, Lucy is ambushed by Tarafazar, who's countered by Lucy's summoning of Loki. As Loki and Virgo fight for Lucy's sake, Jackal appears in her way. Lucy attempts to fight him off with her fleuve d'étoile, only to be gravely injured by the demon's curse. 
Admitting to herself that a physical confrontation with Jackal will lead to her death, Lucy, thinking about her comrades, grabs another golden key, summoning Aquarius as she falls into the water, begging for her spirits to defeat her enemies. Much to Lucy's relief, Aquarius arrives and tells her to stand back, and then proceeds to sweep away the other demons. Lucy, despite her hopes, is only able to watch from the side as her spirits are each defeated by the demons. Jackal, Lamy, and Tarafazar then approach her exhausted body, and the former uses his explosive curse to severely injure Lucy's leg when she insists that she must save everyone. Lamy then picks Lucy up and encourages Jackal to blow up her breasts, only for the demon to shock them both by killing Lamy instead, with Lucy questioning how he could do that to a friend. Before Jackal can turn his hand onto Lucy, however, Aquarius appears and pushes the demon back with a wave of water. The water spirit tells her that she has a chance to win, but only if she can summon the celestial spirit King. Lucy points out that she doesn't have his key, and is then horrified to learn that in order to summon the King, she must sacrifice one of her zodiac keys. Protesting and refusing to give up any of her friends, Aquarius offers her key as the toll. Though the spirit tells her how much she's always hated her and compares her to her mother, Lucy continues to argue that there must be another way, insisting that Aquarius is her friend regardless of the latter's feelings towards her. Aquarius then reminds her of everything that's at stake, and now, fully convinced, Lucy whispers that she likes Aquarius before summoning the Celestial Spirit King, whose strength destroys Cube. Lucy continues to despair, lying on the ground just as the Celestial Spirit King confronts Mard Gear. A shocked Jackal then ponders about what's going on and turns to Lucy in order to attack her. However, she's suddenly enveloped by a sphere of water. She feels her magic power surging up, while hearing the Celestial Spirit King's voice telling her that this is Aquarius' magic. Lucy then stands up, determined to face her opponent and save her friends. Jackal attempts to blow her up, but to no avail as Lucy is protected by the barrier of water. She recites an incantation and hits Jackal with the power of Uranometria. After successfully utilizing the spell, Lucy manages to defeat Jackal, but faints from exhaustion as a result. Tarafazar, shocked by the girl's achievement, attempts to finish her off at that very moment, but a revived Gajiel blocks his attack and protects Lucy to her relief. Keys tries to end her life once more, but this time Juvia interferes. Silver and Tempester then appear, but are respectively held off by Grey and Natsu, with the latter acknowledging that Lucy somehow saved them all. Leaving the fighting up to her friends now, Lucy is just a bystander when she witnesses Silver rushing towards Grey, both of them disappearing from sight. However, despite being badly injured, she's attacked by Tempester's tornadoes. Lucy then worries about her friend's safety, but Natsu reassures her that he'll deal with them. She then witnesses Juvia being taken by Keys, however her attempt to help is halted as she is trapped by a skeleton that Keys summons. Lucy's expression soon changes to that of disbelief, having witnessed Keys seemingly eradicate Juvia. However, as Juvia in her water form defeats the demon, the multiple skeletons keeping Lucy down disappear. Lucy rushes to Juvia's side when she notices the weakened woman sinking to the ground, catching her and hugging her as she listens to her desire to see Grey. With tears falling from her eyes, she assures her that they'll reunite soon enough. Moments later, Lucy is shocked upon seeing Gajiel unleash his Shadow Iron Dragon mode. Watching as Natsu and Gajiel easily overpower their opponents, she's bewildered as the two end up punching one another. Irritated, Lucy scolds the two and reacts to a sleeping Juvia calling her a love rival afterwards. She's then swept away by the black water caused by Torafuzar's Tenchi Kaime, soon running out of breath and falling unconscious due to the water's poison. Unconscious, Lucy is helped by Levy and Gajiel, the former providing her with air through solid script while the latter battles and defeats Tarafazar, saving Lucy as the poison water disappears from within her body. After Tenchi Kaime's disappearance, Lucy, still unconscious, lies on the ground next to Juvia. She eventually wakes up and is shocked to hear Acnologia arriving on the battlefield. She then notices Natsu is suffering due to Acnologia's presence and tries to help but is burned by Natsu's increasing body temperature as she touches him, and she gets worried when she sees that Gajiel is showing the same symptoms. She curiously looks at Natsu while he states Igniel's name and looks in shock and disbelief as the fire dragon comes out from Natsu's body. She then sadly looks at Natsu as he cries after finally finding his father. Later, Lucy meets up with Lasana, Elfman, Warren, Jet, and Droy. Although temporarily saddened when reminded of Aquarius, Lucy gets over it and explains how she got separated from the others, as well as the identity of the dragon fighting Acnologia. Although the mages are hopeful at first that with Igniel's assistance they can prevail, Wendy arrives along with Dornbolt and Carla, much to Lucy's surprise, and warns them about the huge number of face artifacts about to activate. When Warren's telepathy proves useless to alert everyone on time, Lucy is depressed at first, however Makarov speaks to her via telepathy, encouraging her not to lose hope, as they too have a secret weapon, Lumen Histoire. Lucy and the others are told to return to the guild's basement. From behind her, 
Elfman refuses, leading Lucy to question his decision. The group moves out shortly after, though Lucy suddenly collapses to the ground feeling exhausted, everyone soon realizes that Face is activated and begun to drain magic from the world. However, before they all lose their powers completely, the dragon parents of the dragon slayers arrive and destroy all of the Face devices. Seeing that they've managed to stop the resurrection of E.N.D. and the magic's disappearance, Lucy rejoices along with Lysana and the rest of the guild. After the fight against Tartaros ends, Lucy along with the other mages witness the dragon slayers reunite with the dragons, albeit temporarily, as the creatures have already expended most of their remaining strength to destroy the threat of face. As they ascend to the sky, they swear to watch over mankind for all eternity. A week after the battle, Lucy uses cancer to help Wendy regrow her hair as she claims that her normal hairstyle is what suits her most. Later, she returns to her place, suspecting that Natsu and Happy are there. However, all she finds is a letter notifying her that Natsu and Happy are going away for a year to train. Lucy immediately runs out of her house, realizing in tears that she'd be lonely without them. Not too long after this, Lucy is summoned by Makarov along with just about every other member of Fairy Tale, only to learn that Makarov is disbanding Fairy Tale, leaving her downcast. Avatar Arc a year after Fairy Tail's disbandment, Lucy becomes a reporter and covers the ongoing Grand Magic game of the year X792. Performing her morning necessities, she heads out to work, arriving late due to the massive crowd outside the stadium. Momentarily, she begins to cover the current event alongside Jason, thinking back on the time that the latter offered her the job to become a model, something that didn't suit her fancy. The battle is quick to end, with Lucy parting ways with Jason at the end of the day, but not before he claims that without Fairy Tail and the other guilds, the Grand Magic Games would have been a bore. She reminds him that Fairy Tail is long gone, but he notices the mark on the back of her hand, prompting her to lower her head. Lucy heads home, taking care of her report and jumping into the bath shortly afterwards. While in the bath, she tells herself that she wants to see her friends again, throwing a tantrum that attracts the neighbor's attention. She then heads to her room, looking at the map that she created, pinpointing everyone's most recent whereabouts as she crawls up into a fetal position, wondering if Fairy Tail will ever be reunited. She heads to bed, waking up early the following morning, and gets pumped for work. Shortly after the two final guilds enter the stadium, Lucy is asked for her opinion, only to inform Jason that it's clearly Scarmillion's victory. The noted prediction proves to be true, shocking Jason. With a displeased expression, Lucy admits that they're strong, but is still doubtful of their achievement. Just then, an intruder enters the stadium, leading Lucy to issue an order for all of the viewers to leave the stadium, due to the person's magic power. However, before they can do anything, the person releases flames that encompasses the entirety of the Grand Magic Game Stadium. Lucy then watches as he easily defeats the winning guild, the flames reaching her and burning her clothes. Before long, she looks at the person once again, the mask coming off, and Natsu announcing his presence. Shocked, Lucy can only announce his name and is soon greeted by Happy. Happy informs her that Natsu wanted to challenge the champions, all while the Dragon Slayer defeats all of the mages below. Moments later, the two make eye contact, greeting each other after one year of separation. After Natsu is released from prison, Lucy awaits for his arrival outside the castle, quickly being asked why the other fairy tale members aren't with her. Lucy frowns, reminding herself that the two aren't aware of recent events. The trio sits elsewhere, where Lucy explains to Natsu and Happy that fairy tale is no more. Upset, Natsu wonders what Makarov has been doing, but Lucy claims that he's missing. Just then, she also berates Natsu for randomly leaving the guild without discussing it with anyone first. However, she apologizes when Natsu is left speechless, claiming that they must have had a lot on their mind as well. Lucy then takes them to her house in Crocus, with Natsu and Happy quickly making themselves at home. Lucy then listens as Natsu begins to tell her about his adventures, smiling and blushing at the familiar feeling. In the middle of the night, Natsu and Happy get up. Bored, they decide to enter Lucy's room and paint on her face, but come face to face with the map Lucy has been creating to keep track of the fairy tale members. The following morning, Lucy awakens shocked upon hearing the army knocking at her door. Before she can question this, Natsu and Happy appear, wondering if they've been caught already. Confused, Lucy looks at the two and asks what they've done, but Natsu simply grabs her and jumps out of the window, explaining that he's raised the beacon for Fairy Tail's revival. After releasing her, he tells her that they'll revive Fairy Tail, leading Lucy to tears as she follows behind, with the army running after them. After escaping, Lucy and her two friends arrive in Tully Village and says that she wants to get an in before hitting Natsu on the head when he says that he should destroy the restored clock tower to make the new and old parts even. She's then challenged by a battle-happy Natsu to a sparring match, however, before she can show him her new abilities, he spits fire between her legs at Thieves a ways away, which leaves Lucy disturbed and insulted after he eventually turns her down for the match. In the inn, Lucy reveals that she doesn't have everyone's location, but she suggests that they go southeast to Margaret Town and visit Lamia's Scale. Upon arriving, the group watches the Thanksgiving Day Parade, a little weird how they celebrate Thanksgiving, and after a while, they see Wendy and Sherry get on stage and perform a song to a perplexed and bewildered Natsu. 
Lucy explains that since she was good friends with Sherry, Wendy joined Lamia's scale, as well as remarking that to find work, a lot of the others joined different guilds as well. Additionally, Lucy explains the premise of the Thanksgiving Day Parade to Natsu, after which the group is approached by a human Carla, confusing them. After the parade, Lucy and the others visit Wendy in the Lamia scale guild and watches as Natsu tries to kidnap her. After Natsu is stopped, Lucy explains that they want her to help them revive Fairy Tale and reveals to everyone that Makarov has been missing since the guild's disbandment. She and the other members of Lamia Scale present then also explain to Natsu that the Ten Wizard Saints got together and reformed the Magic Council, as well as to Natsu that even though it has occurred, Makarov's whereabouts remain concealed. Everyone then expresses shock as Wendy turns joining them down, and as the human Carla shows up again, Lucy wonders why she's human in the first place. Depressed at Wendy's turning of them down, the three of them go to the Viper Inn and mope. However, when Natsu tickles Lucy, she punches him and tells him that when he says that he's going to kidnap her, that he can't. A while later, Lucy and the others hear explosions occurring in the town and find it to be under attack by monsters sent by Lamia Scale's rival guild, Orochi's Finn. Upon hearing that the monsters number over 100,000, Lucy expresses utter horror when Natsu states that he's going to deal with the monsters alongside Wendy, Carla, and Happy. Lucy watches as Sharia kicks Natsu in the face and makes Happy take her instead. As Lucy prepares to fight against the horde of monsters invading the town, she's shocked to see Natsu's progress as he swiftly sends the monsters flying before running after the Sky Sisters. She then fights alongside Lion and the rest of Lamia Scale, demonstrating the new abilities that she's acquired over the last year. She summons Loki and utilizes a technique known as Star Dress to be able to use the same abilities as the Celestial Spirit she summoned. She then attacks a monster with an upgraded version of her signature move, Regulus Lucy Kick. After the mages manage to fend off the monsters, Lucy receives Lion's gratitude for helping Lamia scale. She then wonders where Wendy and Sherry have gone, but Yuka tells her that they want to talk about something by themselves. She's later present when Wendy and Carla bid their farewell to Lamia scale, expressing their gratitude for taking them in, and Lucy is revealed to see that her two friends didn't really forget about Fairy Tale all this time. The group then heads off to collect another mage, who according to Lucy, is located in Amaferashi Village, a place of never-ending rain. Approaching the village, Lucy notes that it's only raining in one spot. Heading inside the rain, they find the place abandoned. Traveling further in, they find Juvia, who deliriously jumps at Natsu, believing he's grey, as Lucy looks on with a smile. Lucy tells Juvia that she's glad she's still the same. Coming to her senses, Juvia recognizes everyone before collapsing, after which they take her inside a nearby house and dry her off, which Lucy wonders if it could be her home. Natsu smells around and says grey had been there too. Juvia awakens and says that she and Grey had lived there together alone, and that they ate, trained together, and even slept together, shocking Wendy and Lucy, the latter of whom says that her information is unnecessary for Wendy. Juvia tells them that Grey's body was afflicted by mysterious black marks, and from that day onward he would frequently go out alone, before ultimately never coming back. Natsu insults Grey for leaving her alone, to which Lucy says is funny coming from him. Natsu remarks that he left a note of sorts, but Lucy tells him that it was inconsiderate towards those he left behind. Juvia makes a sarcastic remark to Lucy about her and Natsu's relationship. After Lucy yells, Juvia gets back to saying that she doesn't know where Grey is, but she's sure he'll come back eventually. Natsu says he'll go find Grey. After Juvia falls asleep, they head outside again, and they ask Natsu how he's going to find Grey, as Lucy doesn't have anything in her memos on him. Natsu then states that he's going to go to Sabretooth. Lucy accompanies Natsu and Happy to Sabretooth via boar ride. After marveling at how big their guild is, asks Natsu if he's sure about getting information regarding Grey here. She's told that he isn't here, and is then told by the Fire Dragon Slayer that he believes in Grey, but that he must stop believing him to get the information. Lucy is promised Grey will return, and is asked not to question Natsu about it. The group then arrives at the guild where they're greeted by Yukino, Orga, and Rufus, and briefly discuss Fairy Tale's comeback. An overweight Sting then greets the three, leaving Lucy shocked. Lucy then watches as Natsu inquires about Rogue and Frosh's whereabouts, and Lucy tries to stop Natsu from leaving abruptly when he learns that they just left to go on a job. She follows him and watches as he stops Rogue and Frosh from going on their mission to stop Avatar. As the Slayers talk, Lucy and Minerva converse, wherein Lucy learns that Sting gained all of that weight in an eating contest, and that Sabretooth didn't participate in the Grand Magic Games because Fairy Tail didn't. Minerva apologizes to Lucy for taking the naval battle too far, and Lucy accepts her apology. When Minerva says that she was sad when she heard Fairy Tail broke up, Lucy holds up her guild mark to Minerva to see and smiles, affectionately saying that as long as Fairy Tail is in their hearts, it'll never go away. On their journey to Avatar, Lucy explains to Natsu and Happy that Avatar is a religious cult worshipping Zaref. She then questions Natsu's confidence that Grey is a part of Avatar, and Natsu reveals that future Rogue from the alternate timeline was supposed to face Grey around that time. 
Lucy reminds Natsu that the timeline has changed, but Natsu is still bothered by Gray's black mark, wondering whether learning Devil Slayer magic in such a short time could potentially change his personality. Lucy is visibly worried and ponders on why Natsu keeps the outcome of the fight to himself, but Natsu comforts her and says Gray is one of them. The three of them finally reach the church, and Lucy points out how old it looks. After arriving, Lucy stops Natsu from charging in head first and instead summons Virgo and adopts her respective star dress form, allowing them to sneak into the church via digging through the ground. As soon as they enter the stronghold, Natsu shouts for Grey to come out, causing Lucy to panic. Within moments, they're visited by three different Avatar members, and Lucy watches as Natsu easily dispatches of them all. After their defeat, Lucy looks on in surprise as Grey enters the room, seeking out Natsu's desire for a duel. Her pleas for them to cease their battle are ignored. She can only watch as Natsu tries to convince Grey to help them revive Fairy Tail, and is deeply shocked when the latter tells them that he's abandoned their former guild, going so far as to call their current friendly behavior fake. Unable to stand his words, she slaps him and tells him to never again utter such false and insulting words. Suddenly, she begins to experience pain in her abdomen and collapses, this being the result of Mary's magic. Distracted by her condition, her comrades are captured too. Mary continues to torture her while Jerome threatens to behead her to get Natsu under control. Their infiltration now a failure, Lucy is stunned when Gray informs them that he took the decision to join Avatar while completely sane, proving this by showing the Avatar mark branded in place of his fairy tale symbol. Later, Lucy, Natsu, and Happy sit in Avatar's prison cells and discuss Gray's recent activities, when Gomon suddenly appears in front of their cell. He plans to torture Lucy for information regarding who sent her and her comrades to Avatar, but after being angered by Natsu, decides to skip the torture and grabs an axe to cut Lucy in half. However, Gomon is suddenly frozen solid by Grey, who appears to assist the trio, and much to everyone's surprise, Grey hands Natsu a communication lacrima with Urza on the end of the line. All four of them leave Avatar together, and while they're on the move, Grey and Urza explain everything about Grey's infiltration mission as well as his markings. After they're done explaining, Grey apologizes to Lucy for all of the things he said while pretending to be a member of Avatar, and Lucy, in turn, apologizes for slapping him. When they arrive at Malba City, Natsu, Grey, Lucy, and Happy stand in the way of the attacking cultists. Lucy summons Taurus and dons his respective star dress, while Natsu and Grey make short work of some of the cultists. As Urza comes attacking from the rear, Lucy comments about how nostalgic the situation feels. Lucy watches Natsu and Grey begin their assault, and together with Taurus attack the Avatar cultists, exercising the great strength of her Taurus star dress in the form of various whip attacks such as Earth Wave to defeat a myriad of opponents. Afterwards, she's saved by Grey from being assaulted by a sword-wielding cultist, and alongside her friends, she continues to put up a valiant fight. After a while, Lucy is told by Taurus that his stomach hurts, and mere seconds later, hers does as well. Mary then arrives, claiming that her black magic, called Virus, is the culprit, and that it's currently targeting her bowels. Lucy is then insulted by Mary and is threatened with a virus that will render her brain dead. However, before such a thing can occur, Wendy and Carla arrive, with the former negating Mary's virus with her Sky Dragon Slayer magic. Carla then tells Wendy that Mary is behind her. Lucy turns around and defeats Mary with a super-powered Lucy punch. After the fact, Lucy thanks Wendy and Carla for saving her, and she learns that they arrived because Juvia felt better. Lucy is then amazed to see Wendy enter Dragon Force and take out many cultists. Lucy returns to battle and does the same. A short time later, Lucy feels a sinister magic power approaching and then watches as it manifests itself in the arrival of one of the Yakima 18 battle gods, the colossal Ikusa Tsunagi. After this, the battle god attacks with his gargantuan sword. Though Lucy comes out unharmed, she notices someone, who turns out to be Natsu, running up Ikusa Tsunagi's sword. She then listens as Natsu gives a speech about the meaning of friendship and witnesses him strike down Ikusa Tsunagi. When Gajio, Levi, Panther Lily, and Urza arrive on the battlefield, Lucy is ecstatic to see all of her long-lost friends. And at Urza's suggestion, Lucy along with the other former mages of Fairy Tale join together for a victory shout to celebrate Avatar's demise. Sometime after defeating Avatar, everyone travels to Magnolia, where they all agree to revive Fairy Tale. where Lucy thinks about how Avatar couldn't tell them anything about Xerath and all the good times she had in Magnolia with her friends when she was a Fairy Tale member. After remembering the day Makarov disbanded the guild, Lucy stops walking, afraid of reforming Fairy Tale, only to go through that pain again, as well as not being sure if everyone she managed to send letters to came to Magnolia to revive the guild, or even if they remember Fairy Tale at all. It's then that Kana appears behind Lucy and reassures her of everyone's memories of Fairy Tale, on top of revealing that she and others got Lucy's letter. Kana then grabs Lucy's hands, telling her that everyone is waiting. She's pulled forward to see that most of the prominent members of the guild received her letter and are happy to see her. She cries tears of joy upon having Mira Jane welcome her home, her family reunited at last. Alvarez Empire Arc 
Five days after Fairy Tail's revival, as Lucy finishes showering, she walks into her living room to find Happy and Natsu casually eating on her couch. She tries her normal tactic of assaulting them, but it's easily intercepted. Afterwards, they all head to the Fairy Tail Guild to help with the guild's reconstruction, much to Lucy's chagrin. As a fight breaks out between many of the guild members, some things never change, Lucy starts to say something as Mira Jane is hit with a bottle, but her voice is drowned out by Urza's telling everyone to get back to work, ending the fight with a frightening glare. Seeing this, Levy declares that Urza will be the seventh guild master of Fairy Tail. As the guild cheers in support, Mest appears and tells the mages that they must save Makarov. Mest takes Urza to an area off-limits to anyone but Guildmasters. However, Lucy and several others follow regardless and accidentally reveal their presence. From there, Lucy and the others view Lumini Stoir in its entirety and are then exposed to Mest's memories, starting with his original mission to infiltrate the Magic Council for information on the Alvaris Empire, all the way up to Fairy Tail's disbandment and Makarov's disappearance. After learning the truth, Lucy wonders if Makarov is alright and recalls the Magic Council wanting information on his whereabouts. Resolving themselves to rescue Makarov, Urza tells them that she will let the remaining members rebuild the guild, while those present in the room are to go on a secret infiltration and rescue mission, much to Lucy's excitement. As the group heads to the Alvaris Empire via boat, Lucy finds herself dealing with both Natsu and Wendy's motion sickness, and Gray's lack of clothing as he carries the Dragon Slayers to their rooms. Discussing Makarov's mysterious mission, Lucy is confident that they'll understand everything once they rescue him, but is cautious about leaving Fiori territory. Nearing the coast of Caracol Island to meet an informant and get supplies, the group spots Elvira's navy ships, with Wendy and Natsu overhearing that troops are on Caracol looking for a spy. To avoid suspicion, Lucy and the others change their fairy tale guild marks to Kate Shelter guild marks and tell the Elvira's navy men that they're on vacation. The group gets through the checkpoint thanks to Lucy and Urza's flirting, but is then forced to fight the soldiers as a navy member attempts to stab a child. With their cover blown, Wendy and Carla take the child to safety, while Mess teleports away to look for the informant and Team Natsu take out the rest of the soldiers. Victorious, the group sits down and begins talking to a local vendor, just as the shop is suddenly blown to pieces in a large explosion. From the rubble, a stranger appears, introducing himself as a member of the Alvar's Empire's brandish squad, Marin Hollow. Urza attempts to regroup an attack, but finds that he blocked off her magic, as his own involves the manipulation of space. Lucy then attempts to summon a celestial spirit, though Marin blocks her magic too due to its spatial relation. Marin reveals that he has his own special space reserved for those who break his rules, and whisks Lucy and Urza away in a cloud of smoke. However, a member of the Spriggan Twelve, Brandish, appears soon after and demands that Marin return the two women. Lucy is dumped back onto the island and immediately senses Brandish's immense magic power, frightening her. Lucy and the group listen as Brandish advises them not to mess with Alvarez any further, and is shocked when Brandish uses her magic to shrink the island down to a small sliver of land, dropping everyone on the island into the ocean. In the aftermath, Lucy and the team help the island's residents into nearby fishing vessels. After finishing, Mess teleports them to an underwater location, and Lucy is surprised to learn that Serrano is the spy. Serrano taunts Lucy before revealing that she knows where Makarov is, and that she's going to take them there. Soon after, as the group waits for Mess to return to them outside of Alvar's Empire's capital of Vistarian, Lucy, as well as her fellow mages, are happy to finally see Makarov, having been brought to them with the help of Mess's teleportation magic. However, they're then shocked to learn that Zeref, is in Alvarez. As Lucy and the team are happy to have Makarov back, Ajil Rommel, another member of the Spriggan Twelve, appears. Choosing to escape, the group flees in a magical vehicle, but is forced to fight as Ajil quickly catches up, with Lucy revealing her Sagittarius star dress and shooting magical arrows as the Spriggan attacks. Much to Lucy's surprise, Ajil then creates a pit of quicksand which traps all the fairy tale mages. However, Natsu frees them by evaporating the sand, and Lucy, along with the rest of her comrades, stand by to engage again. Lucy then watches as Ajil attacks, with Grey unsuccessfully attempting to freeze his sand. However, Makarov takes action, trying to protect Lucy and the others in his giant form by using his own body as a shield, just as Ajil's sands of death rage towards him. At that moment, Laxus's lightning disperses the sand wave, saving the group, and an impressed Lucy watches as the lightning mage stands atop Christina, with the rest of his team also on board. Teleported aboard by Mest, Lucy and the group escape on the ship as Laxus's attack holds back Ajil again, and smiles as a teary-eyed Makarov rejoices at having his true family back. Relaxing at the guild, Lucy feasts with Levy and Plu as Makarov's return has him resume his position as guildmaster. Recounting the return of her guildmates, as well as the incalculable strength of Alvarez, Zeref, and Lumini Stoir, Lucy drinks with Kana and admits to herself that though this will be her hardest battle yet, her only desire at this time is that she doesn't intend to lose anyone. She then smiles as Natsu explains that they must fight Alvarez if they want to survive as a guild and live together. 
As the guild prepares for war, Lucy convinces herself once again that they'll be fine when suddenly Mavis appears, intending to reveal everything she knows about Fairyheart, Lumini Stoir's real name, her past, her relationship with Zareph, and shockingly for Lucy, their shared quest of the One Magic. Lucy expresses her shock after Mavis says that Fairyheart is an infinite source of magic power, and that it could potentially fire the Aetherian non-stop. She's then among the members who reassure Mavis that none of what happened is her fault, and expresses her appreciation for the creation of Fairy Tale. Curious to know Natsu's secret weapon that can apparently end Zareph once and for all, Lucy asks for information, but Natsu insists on keeping it a secret. Lucy then calls out to Makarov, asking him to tell her everything he knows about the enemies they're up against, distressing as Makarov explains the level of magic power their adversaries possess, particularly Mage King August. Later in her room, Lucy writes about the threat of Zareph and the advanced magic source, Fairyheart, also known as their guild's first master, Mavis Vermilion. Deep in thought, she's unexpectedly interrupted by Natsu and Happy, as usual, who have yet again entered her apartment without permission. She scolds them, but settles down when the two state that they don't have anyone else to hang out with. Happy suggests they play some games, but Lucy reminds him of the upcoming invasion, saying that unlike them, she's not the least bit excited for the war to come. Natsu surprises her by saying that he's not excited about it either, as fights to the death aren't really something he enjoys. Lucy then smiles as he goes on by saying that this is merely a battle they have to win for the sake of their future. Before he can go on any further, Lucy stops him, claiming that a statement like that could be considered a death flag. However, Natsu brushes her off by saying that Igniel told him to talk about the future, as it's something that would make him want to live on. Later on, while Natsu and Happy are still in the midst of the game with Lucy, having seemingly abandoned the two in favor of reading, they hear a noise coming from outside as a horde of Alvar's airships intrude the airspace above Magnolia. Hearing the bell for battle ring, Lucy panics as they aren't ready to fight yet. After a while, Lucy gets dressed and prepares to leave, grabbing Aquarius's broken key on her way out, asking her friend to lend her strength. However, before she can get out the door, she hears a noise from her bathroom and goes to investigate, only to find Brandish Mew in her tub along with a shrunken Marin. When she questions why one of the Spring and Twelve is in her house, Brandish Muse is aloud while Lucy panics at her presence. Her questions unanswered, Lucy is then invited to get in the tub, but refuses twice, even after Brandish stuffs Marin in a bottle. Brandish then loses her temper and threatens Lucy with the shrinking of the entire town, promising that if she follows her orders, then all will be fine. When Lucy doesn't immediately comply and instead asks Brandish what she's after, the Spriggan shrinks the neighboring house. Lucy repairs to stab Brandish with Aquarius' broken key, but is stopped when Brandish asks if she's Layla's daughter. Lucy asks if she knew her mother, and Brandish angrily glares at Lucy and begins shrinking the house. Escaping in time, Lucy asks Brandish how she knew her mother, but Brandish shrugs off the question, calling the story annoying. Before she can do anything to Lucy, Kana arrives to save her. Lucy then proceeds to crush Marin, enabling her to use her celestial spirit magic and activate her Ares star dress. A short while later, Lucy and everyone else in town is caught in Ajil's sand world, and she wonders what it is. Sand world, however, quickly subsides with Ajil's defeat, and amidst the settling dust, Lucy wonders where Brandish is, but she sees that she's still in front of them and that she has hay fever because of the pollen. Lucy then watches as Kana knocks Brandish out, questioning what to do with her. They agree to take her back to the guild as a prisoner. Later in the guild's basement, Lucy approaches the bound Brandish after reprimanding the observing Wakaba and Makau for speaking inappropriately of Brandish's body, and asks about the relation to her mother. Brandish dodges Lucy's question and tells Lucy to kill her while she has the chance, but she instead looks at her sadly, and departs for the upstairs, where she learns of the other major Fiori guilds going on the offensive. She sees that Natsu is snuck off and worries for him. Mavis then gives her orders to remain in the guild and keep watch over Brandish with Kana, rather than mobilize with the other prominent fighters. A mere moment later, Lucy sees Natsu on Warren's magic radar flying at an extremely high speed towards Zareph's location. Lucy and Kana later save Brandish from Marin, who had snuck into the guild to assassinate his master, and brings her to the infirmary. Brandish awakes before long, and Lucy tells her that Marin is locked up, and that her restraints are now more accommodating. After denying the desire to torture Brandish and stating that she doesn't think she's a bad person, Brandish agrees to tell Lucy about Layla, on the condition that her cuffs are removed and that she talk to Lucy alone. Everyone agrees, and once alone, Brandish reveals that her mother, Grammy, was one of Layla's servants alongside Spedo and Zoldeo, and that when Layla retired from being a mage, Grammy was given Aquarius' key. Lucy becomes confused by this, stating that she got Aquarius' key from her mother, however, Brandish reveals that Layla re-obtained Aquarius' key by killing Grammy. 
As she expresses shock over this news, Brandish takes advantage of Lucy's naivete and begins to asphyxiate her as a means to avenge her mother. A vase of water is knocked over in the ensuing conflict, and from it rises Aquarius, who saves Lucy from Brandish. Lucy begins to rejoice at seeing Aquarius, believing her to have come back for her, but Aquarius reveals that she arrived because the Celestial Spirit King opened the gate for her, and that a new gate of the Waterbearer Key had been born somewhere in the world. Lucy then proceeds to watch Brandish and Aquarius' comedic reunion, and when Brandish states that she can't forgive Layla, Aquarius says that Lucy is not Layla and that Layla didn't kill Grammy. In response to this, Aquarius takes Brandish and Lucy to a place called Star Memory, where they can physically view memories of celestial spirits. However, to do so, they both take the form of mermaids. While in Star Memory, they learn of Lucy's ancestor, Anna Harphelia, and her plan with Zeref and the dragons to send powerful warriors to the future to defeat Acnologia, as well as that the Eclipse Gate requires an entrance and an exit to be attended to to function properly. Lucy then learns that Layla opened the door in the future per their clan's instruction, but could not locate Aquarius' key, nor Grammy, and thus supplemented the Twelfth Key with her life force. After watching the memory of Layla and Grammy's reunion, and Grammy's subsequent returning of Aquarius' key, the two young girls bear witness to Grammy's murder at the hands of Zoldeo. With that, they exit Star Memory, where Lucy consoles a distraught Brandish, hoping they can be friends like their mothers. Aquarius tries to tell her one last thing before she has to leave, but Happy bursts through the door, crying for someone to help Natsu, who has suddenly stopped moving. Lucy proceeds to grab Natsu and attempt to wake him up. After she fails, she listens for a heartbeat and can't hear one, which brings her to tears. She's then pushed out of the way by poor Liuska, who examines Natsu and reveals that he's developed an anti ether nano tumor and will as such die if it isn't immediately removed. However, no surgeon in Ishgar can remove the mass, and neither Wendy nor Sheria can mitigate its effects. This news causes Lucy to break down into even greater tears, which prompts the onlooking Brandish to subsequently offer to shrink Natsu's tumor to a non-lethal size if they remove her cuffs. Hearing this, Lucy begs her to save Natsu, and after removing the cuffs, Brandish does so and is relocated to her cell, where Lucy visits her and thanks her for saving Natsu. Brandish, however, tells Lucy that she has no desire to be her friend, and after, Lucy is asked for a moment of her time by Aquarius. The two then talk on a balcony, where Aquarius tells Lucy that her key could be anywhere in the world, and that she won't give her any hints as to where it is. As Lucy tells Aquarius that she won't let anyone else have her key, the celestial spirit disappears, expressing delight towards the day when Lucy finds her key. Lucy then thinks back to before the war started, when Natsu and Happy mention that they have a lot of things they want to do when the fighting ends, and Lucy realizes that she, too, now has something to do after the war. Lucy later resolves to sit in the infirmary and watch Natsu alongside Happy. She's visited by Freed, who's checking on Natsu's condition. Lucy in return checks on Brixlow and Evergreen's conditions, but is then asked where Laxus went, and she explains to Harjion to liberate it from Alvarez. When Freed prays that Laxus doesn't overexert himself, Lucy tells him that his prayer will likely end up unanswered, which Freed despondently recognizes, his overall demeanor leaving Lucy confused. Later, Lucy falls asleep near Natsu's sickbed. After waking up, Lucy and Happy continue to watch Natsu, and she tells the worried Exceed that Natsu is bound to wake up sometime soon. However, commotion caused by Jacob Lesio above results in Orologium summoning himself to protect Lucy, Happy, and Natsu from his magic. After hearing Mavis's screams, Lucy rushes upstairs and attacks Jacob, saving her from his torturous assaults. Upon being asked how she evaded his magic, she replies that it's because she's been blessed by the stars. Lucy is then subject to a surprise knife-throwing assault from Jacob, who's using Lucy's life as a bargaining tool for Fairyheart. But before the knives can attack, a completely rejuvenated Natsu blocks and melts the knives, leaving a spared Lucy jovial, as well as sarcastically quipping if he enjoyed his nap. Lucy then proceeds to watch as Natsu battles Jacob, but is overwhelmed and then after Jacob turns invisible multiple times, she summons Loki so he can use his lion brilliance to make Jacob visible again. Jacob immediately takes care of Loki and then turns his attention back to Natsu and Lucy, where the two are assaulted by invisible weapons, another property of the man's stealth. In an effort to make Natsu experience hell, Lucy's clothes are turned invisible, revealing her undergarments much to her embarrassment. However, this has no effect on Natsu, and instead forces Jacob to close his eyes so as to not be disrespectful to Lucy's privacy. The two then take advantage of this, making it seem as though Lucy has removed all of her clothes to force Jacob to lower his guard, after which the two use the strategy of kicking him in the face. They then continue to fight the livid Jacob, but are continuously overwhelmed by him in both his visible and invisible states, after he states that he's going to start killing their captured friends, Lucy points out that Brandish and Marin are inside his transport. He promptly frees them both, which allows Lucy to use Gemini to copy Marin and his rules of the area, which completely dispels transport and frees the entire guild. Lucy then watches as Jacob's plan to use transport again is foiled by Happy, and then as Makarov punches Jacob out of the guild and Natsu defeats him. 
Lucy, Happy, and Natsu then visit Brandish as she's returned to her cell. Pointing out that she doesn't have to be locked in the cell, Lucy is only left wondering as Brandish subtly states that August is approaching. Arriving at the guild hall later, Lucy decides to join Natsu to fight August. However, Makarov disapproves such an action due to August's immense power, leading to a brief argument between him and Natsu. This prompts Brandish to join the conversation, having been freed by Natsu. She points out that they've been mistaken, and makes it clear that while August is the strongest man among them, Irene Balsarian is the strongest woman, going by the title of Scarlet Despair, leaving everyone speechless. Afterwards, Brandish says that she'll do a favor for Lucy and negotiate with August due to the two of them knowing each other for a long time. Lucy and Natsu state that they believe in her and set off for August despite Mest's objections. While on the way, Lucy and the others discuss the impending negotiations when Natsu notices that Mest is following them and tells him to stop hiding. Mest relays that he believes the negotiating won't go well, but Lucy and Natsu dismiss his concerns. When Lucy asks if they're going to walk the entire way, Brandish uses her magic to enlarge Happy to gigantic proportions so they can ride on top of him. The group then leaves on the gigantified Happy, whereupon Lucy complains to Brandish about her increasing the size of Natsu's head. Lucy's bust is then shrunk and then grossly expanded by Brandish for amusement purposes, much to her displeasure. However, the group's nonsense stops upon their sensing of August's vast magic power. Upon getting a glimpse of him from above, Lucy reminds Natsu that they're here to negotiate, not to fight. Upon landing, Lucy watches as Brandish attempts to negotiate with August, wherein she and Natsu notice that the elderly man's magic power is much higher than Brandish's. Lucy continues to listen to Brandish negotiate with August, and awkwardly thanks Brandish for thinking that they aren't evil. She then scolds Natsu for staring at August and watches as August relents to Brandish and agrees to talk to Fairy Tail. However, Lucy becomes aghast when Brandish, revealed to have been manipulated into doing so by Mest, stabs August and incurs his wrath. Immediately after, August knocks Brandish out, prompting Lucy to run towards her. Natsu interferes and grabs Lucy, shielding her from August's massive magical explosion. After following Irene's Universe 1, Lucy, Natsu, and Happy are teleported to a lush area, where Lucy admonishes Natsu for groping and mounting her. She tells a confused Natsu that August hitting them with his magic was the last thing she remembered. Natsu replies that he ate it because it was heat-based, and after he says that he can't smell or sense messed August or Brandish. Lucy wonders what transpired. The three go on to venture out of the forest, only to find that the Cardia Cathedral and Mercurius have been warped to be next to each other. The group marvels at the sight of the two landmarks, which Lucy remarks must be a joke. Grey, carrying a wounded, unconscious Urza and Juvia, appear right at that moment, wherein the group of five immediately discuss how they have no idea where the guild is now located. The group then travels through their strange new location by the palace, and stops when they spy a giant eye staring down at them from the sky. Lucy and the group also stop when they hear a voice telling them where the guild is, and that they, Fairy Tail, need to go back and protect Mavis, who's in trouble. On their way home to the guild, Lucy and the group stop to rest atop the hill, overlooking their warped home, but when the sun rises, she and the others awake, ready to take back Mavis and their home. The group stands atop the hill, looking at their warped home, where Lucy marvels at the sheer number of enemies they face. They all get themselves in the mindset of battle, and intent on rescuing Mavis and reclaiming their guild, charge at the soldiers, wherein Lucy summons Taurus and uses her Taurus star dress to make work of Alvara's soldiers alongside him. Eventually, reinforcements arrive in the form of Wendy, Carla, and Angel, among others. However, God Serena descends on the battlefield and overwhelms the fairy tale mages standing in front of him with purgatory and Sea King Dragon Slayer magic, which Lucy expresses amazement at. She and the others are then attacked with Gale Dragon Slayer magic, but the magic is broken apart by Gildards, whose return fills Lucy with joy. Lucy and the others continue to rejoice, and she continues to watch as Gildards bests God Serena and clears a path for her and her guildmates to move forward. As she presses on, Lucy notes how cold it's become, earning her a taunt from Juvia. However, despite Natsu trying to heat the area with his fire, she, Natsu, Juvia, and Happy are frozen solid by the descending Invel, leaving Grey as the only one unaffected by the Winter General's magic. Lucy and the others are eventually unfrozen by Natsu, but before they can work together to fight Invel, a giant brandish appears and snatches up her, Natsu, and Happy, after which they're taken away from the site of this particular battle. Lucy and the others are then dropped by Brandish, who explains to them that she's sparing their lives out of respect for what they did for her. However, she says that she's going to slaughter all of their friends and that the Empire's victory is assured, as they don't know the might of the Twelve. Natsu goes on to challenge Brandish, which Lucy immediately disagrees with, but an Irene-enhanced Nineheart appears in search of Urza, where he proves himself able to resist and overpower Brandish. Lucy then watches as Natsu defeats Nineheart in a single hit. With Nineheart out of the way, Lucy begs of Brandish to step aside, but in response, the Spriggan 12 member re-enlarges Natsu's tumor, which renders him unconscious. When Lucy learns of this, Brandish reveals to her that she views Natsu as a threat and that the three of them are enemies. 
Lucy tells Brandish that they can be friends instead, but she denies this as a possibility and challenges Lucy to combat, wherein Lucy asks her to heal Natsu if she wins. The two then engage in combat, wherein Lucy utilizes Scorpio and various star dresses against Brandish and the power of her command T. However, she's then overwhelmed by Brandish, but states that regardless of strength levels or personal feelings, she's going to protect Natsu. Their fight is interrupted by Demaria, who reveals to them that Brandish could have killed them all in an instant if she wished, and that she planned on losing on purpose the moment she felt her, Demaria's presence. Lucy then painfully watches as Demaria cuts down Brandish and is then subject to Demaria's wrath, who blames Lucy for corrupting Brandish. Later, at an unspecified location, Lucy is tied to a chair, unconscious, with Demaria thinking of ways to make her suffer. Upon waking up, she's met with an unconscious Natsu tied to a chair opposite her, whereupon she realizes that she too is tied to a chair with magic sealing stone cuffs. Demaria then appears, informing the blonde mage that she too had recently been at the mercy of such restraints. As the shield of Spriggan menacingly plays with Lucy's face, she questions how Demaria could injure Brandish in the manner she did. Demaria, however, refutes Lucy's claim, saying that she was the one who hurt Brandish. Lucy is repeatedly taunted by Demaria, who uses her seal to pop about the room, something which Lucy thinks is teleportation, at one point even removing her bikini top. The Spring and Twelve member then appears atop Lucy after degrading Natsu and threatens to gouge out her eyes. Her threats don't scare Lucy, and she's attacked by Demaria while calling out Natsu's name in her head. At that moment, Natsu awakens from his slumber and brutalizes Demaria within her own stopped time, causing blood to be splashed on Lucy's face. Her body is then cradled by Natsu, but when she doesn't wake up, Natsu thinks her to be dead and awakens as E.N.D. When Lucy wakes up, she finds the room to be in tatters, Natsu missing, and Demaria extremely wounded and shocked. Lucy asks about Natsu and hazards from her broken rhetoric that Natsu was the one who hurt her. Happy Porliuska, Evergreen, and Brandish then arrive, with Lucy relieved to see Brandish alive. When asked what happened, Lucy offers no concrete information, but then learns from Porliuska that the tumor that Brandish shrunk and then returned to normal size was not anti-Ether Nano, but something demonic that forced Natsu to awaken as something. Prepping to leave, Lucy changes into her clothes from the Grand Magic Games and informs a Brandish stuck with indecision that dealing with indecision is what allows people to grow, and that continuing to deal with it is what it means to be alive. Her words offering the Spriggan 12 member comfort, Lucy tells everyone else to stay put and leaves with Happy in search of Natsu. On the way to Natsu's location, Lucy and Happy are caught in the light of fairy law. The two eventually make it to Natsu and Grey's location, just after Wendy Carla and Juvia, where Lucy catches Natsu as he falls over from exhaustion, saying that he knows how to worry people. After Natsu loses consciousness again, Lucy picks him up and plans to bring him to Porliuska for treatment, just as Happy and Carla pick up the also unconscious Grey and Juvia, respectively but their retreat is blocked by an explosion created by the arriving Irene Balsarian. After seeing Irene greet Urza, Lucy asks if she knows her, which she replies that she doesn't. However, in a timely fashion, Larkade Dragneel's magic makes its way across the battlefield. Lucy and the others are unaffected, but Irene is not. At Urza's behest, Lucy, Happy, and Carla then take the wounded three and leave. The group eventually arrives back at the underground room, where the wounded Juvia and Grey are healed by Porliuska and Brandish. Lucy learns that Brandish's magic can no longer work on the tumor, and it is untreatable by Porliuska as well. When Diamara chimes in, calling Natsu something akin to a demon, Lucy gets angry and the two argue, with Lucy refuting the idea that Natsu has a hidden dark side, something which earns her a teasing from Evergreen and Brandish. Her words regarding Natsu are cut short by smoke exuding from his body. Feeling that his body has become extremely cold, Lucy screams for him to wake up. Lucy is then told by Porliuska that she needs to disrobe and lie on top of Natsu as a last resort to warm him up, to which Lucy agrees. When Natsu mumbles about Zeref in his sleep, Happy tearfully states that if Zeref is killed, Natsu will die as well, something which shocks Lucy and everyone else present. Lucy does eventually strip and lies on top of Natsu with Happy, desperately hoping that he wakes up. Sometime later, Natsu does wake up, much to Lucy's surprise. Joyful, she hugs him upon his awakening, but soon becomes embarrassed when he points out that she's topless. Porliuska then enters and tells Natsu that she and Happy kept his body temperature raised, which earns Lucy his thanks. When he immediately states that he feels better to the medical advisor, Lucy points out that if he defeats Zeref, then he'll die. Natsu tells her that he sorted out his problem by deciding to be a human. Then, due to Irene's death, Universe 1 is undone, and in a flash of light, Fiori is restored to its former shape. Lucy is shocked to find that they're back in her apartment, but at Natsu's words, she, him, and Happy prepare to head back to Fairy Tale. After getting dressed, the three of them leave the apartment, and upon wondering where the ones who were with them in the underground are, run into Brandish and a shrunken Demaria. 
After Natsu's appearance frightens Demaria, Brandish turns around to leave, citing not wanting to be Lucy's enemy or ally as the reason. Lucy tells her that she hopes that they meet again, and then poor Yusuke, Evergreen carrying Juvia, and Carla arrive in search of Grey, who's disappeared. Before they can ponder further, August reveals himself to be on top of the Cardia Cathedral, and prepares to eradicate all of Magnolia, but is stopped by Gildards. As Natsu proceeds to run off to fight Zaref, Lucy asks about Grey, but Natsu reveals that he believes Grey is heading for Zaref as well. She proceeds to follow them, and watches as, when they get to the guild, Natsu tearfully stops Grey from killing himself with Lost Iced Shell. Lucy then thinks to herself, when Natsu challenges Zaref to another battle, that she'll trust him when he says that he won't die. Lucy then goes on to watch as Natsu and Zaref exchange blows, but then senses, like everyone else at the guild hall, Acnologia arrive on the battlefield. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.